Good evening, one and all, and welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host, and it is a wonderful, exciting evening tonight that we're going to have. The only person that's going to be missing is my my normal co-host, David, so I'm giving a shout-out to him. Hello, David. (laughs) I bet he feels lost tonight, too, but we're going to have fun. I have a guest co-host for tonight, and uh, he's a singer, songwriter, and producer. Uh, He works as a solo artist. He has a few bands. He's all over the place. So uh, let me introduce to you Mark, and let me see if I say this right, Castrillon. Castrillon. Yeah, it's close Castrion. enough. I tried to remember. I've heard insulting things, though. So you didn't border on insulting, so we're fine. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, thanks for being with me today. Oh, my gosh. And then we are going to have to bring our guest on. Uh, Mark is co-hosting, as I said. And our guest is actually a rock star photographer. His name is Michael Strider. And he has been the photographer for, like, Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen, Kiss, Rihanna, as well as doing events and weddings and more. And he's also bringing with him tonight a very sexy new voice. So welcome, Michael. (laughs) I wasn't aware of that. Well, that's an introduction and a half. Thank you. (laughs) The voice is actually by accident. It's because I've got a cold. Yeah. So. I know. It's not always like this. You shouldn't have did that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so now we know Thanks how you're me. feeling <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> mm-hmm. i just wish that you didn't have the cold i know how that's that's uh you know really yucky when you have to talk for a long time so but anyway he doesn't have a problem, let's give have a problem talking don't worry, I'll be no. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably laying in bed with the phone anyhow and drinking his tea or maybe, you know, maybe a hot toddy or something. Probably. If I know Michael, probably. Yeah, close. Yeah. Mostly laying on the couch in front of the fireplace and, and uh, drinking a Pepsi. So it's, uh, you were close. Okay. Not like okay. the old See? days of radio, you know, sitting in a studio. It's very different to be to do, you know, to be so remote for everyone to be so remote and no one really to necessarily be in a big studio, you know. It's kind of cool. Right, right. It uh, is definitely. True. And and you know what? I mean, if we're going to talk about that, Mark is in California. I'm in Chicago, right. and Michael's in North Carolina. I mean, come on. We've covered the whole United States. I know. We do. We have the whole country here. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it's much I, warmer. Actually, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I kept see. a little bit. I don't watch the news much, but I kept a little bit. I mean, it's it's great weather here today compared to how it is back east. So. Yeah, you. I, I'm I'm wishing I was there right now, which I will be in a few weeks. But it's yes, you will. It's be. it's not as bad here as it is in the Northeast, but it's still it's still not California. You know, it's not Southern California anyway. No, we're spoiled. I know. Right? Yeah, definitely. You are. We are. I mean, Definitely. I'm born and raised here, I, so I, I love don't know. going on Facebook and seeing all those photos posted from the actors that are all in California and they're at the beach, you know, sunbathing. Hello, right. stop rubbing that in, in my face. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is one of the luxuries of living in Southern California. The weather is cannot be beat. I mean, I'm born and raised here. I was born in Hollywood, raised in San Fernando Valley here, a suburb of Hollywood, and you know. I, I gotta admit, I'm spoiled. Like I, I, go, I love back east on it, but I, one, I never go in the winter. Two, I've never been there for an extended period of time. So, like I don't, I don't know what I would do if I was in some place where you didn't see the light of day for, you know, or go outside for days. I can't imagine that. That seems just yeah. bizarre to me. It's not. We don't have shoveling like snow, all that stuff. Like that's just unheard of for me. <laughs> yeah, it's that's more so in the Northeast. It's not. It's not so much in the Southeast, like in North Carolina. But it's you know, it, it does get very, very cold sometimes. It's not cold here like it is in Jersey. You know, I used to live in Jersey, but it's not. Um, it's not that kind of cold. But it's still, you know, enough to, uh, you know, never get used to it really. Yeah. You know. No, it's, and I grew up here in up. Chicago too. So I mean, oh, and I hate oh, the did. I hate the winter. Yeah, I no. hate the winter. I can't I played, stand I it. I played a few times in Chicago. <laughs> I love that city, but but I and I've only been there in the cold a couple times. But, but it was crazy, you know. And I I wasn't aware coming from Southern California. 
I wasn't aware that I ended up playing in a club that was like I don't know what district it was in, but it was an industrial district that was basically turned into a nightclub, this basement of an industrial building that are so many nightclubs in that part of town are like Chicago. You don't see that kind of thing on the West Coast. You know, right. you don't see those kind of literally underground basements that become nightclubs that are refineries, old refineries. I, and I did a few of those in Chicago and loved it. That's a great town. Yeah. The only thing, yeah. I, unfortunately, I never got to, I had a layover there one time actually flying to uh, to L.A., but I've never actually got to go out in the city or anything like that. But I, I would love to. I just never had a chance to yet. Well, you obviously uh, like a panel yeah. there, so are you just are you no, there? Well, out of no, <laughs> no, I would not. Or do, I? Yeah, basically. I mean, I grew up here, and you know, and then I married here, and my kids are here, and and oh, you know, you just go. families here. Although I have to say, a lot of them have migrated to California. So, you know, eventually, I guess one of these days, I would love to move somewhere where it's, you know, warm most of the year round. Yeah. Yeah, well, California come here. Place. Everybody else is here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I, I have, you know, I'm going to be 46 this Friday, and, I, and I've and i seen this town go from, you know, it was busy, but it's just insane the amount of people that are here. It's insane the amount that keep and then they continue to migrate here because of the weather. Yes, right. I meet people from the East Coast yeah. constantly at gigs and all that, and and they like, they moved here. Why'd you move here? I, I'd say ten percent of the time it's a job or a girl or right. a guy, whatever it's maybe. Right. But it's the weather. They're like, you know what? I got tired of shoveling snow, and I got tired of. I have. I don't blame them. <clears throat> well, nope, not at all. Yeah, there's not a lot of people all. that. I think well, the, happy the birthday, reason. by the way, too. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, happy birthday, buddy. Happy to be alive. Yeah. Not happy to be 46, but happy to be alive. <laughs> we'll celebrate yeah. when I come out here. Yeah, well, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go play that night for my birthday, so that's kind of, you know, what better way to celebrate my birthday than playing, so. Yeah. And all these years, I thought you were 25. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, all the plastic surgery leads people to believe that I am that young, so. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thank you, doctor, for a fantastic job. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, you know, Bill. Michael's taking pictures of me. Michael's taking a few pictures of me, and you know, he's he managed to capture me in the right light, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, you have some great pictures. I was looking at them, so Michael definitely Thank knows you. what he's doing. Yeah, I yeah, you definitely you. know what you're much. doing. <laughs> it's such a representation of who you are. It's, it's, you know, if you're a musician, you know, a photographer either catches what you are, or it just or the artist or the the subject looks uncomfortable, which makes the photo uncomfortable. It took me years to get to the point where I was comfortable in front of a camera. And well, I, like right. work, I worked with Michael a few times, and he's one of those guys that just has a great demeanor. Every photographer is different in how they get that quote unquote you know look or moment out of you. But um, you know, I prefer the quieter demeanor. You know, the <laughs> little softer. We have a mutual photographer friend of ours who's quite different, but very successful at it. You know. <laughs> Right? Isn't that right, Michael? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, technique just, is it kind of, Go ahead. Oh, it's a technique, I guess, is everything and how you get people to, you know, to, to look the way they want to look when they're happy. I love getting pictures back and going, you make me look like a rock star. Like, that's, you know, they did their job, you know. So. I think the shoot that we did, the last shoot that we did was one of the best that I've, that I've ever done. It was, uh, <clears throat> it was, um, it was, it was just on a mountaintop, not far from my house. Yeah. yeah, it was on the mountaintop right outside of, of your apartment, you said, right? Right at dusk, yeah. Right at dusk, we, wait, we what did we have, like, I suppose, I don't know how long the process of, you know, we, we don't have the whole sunset. It's really only kind of like five minutes you have where the sun yeah. is either too dark or too bright. Right. And we didn't snap that many, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I look at those pictures. I'm looking actually at the promo picture now that you put up, and that's the, what, the one of me next to you, and that's from the shoot, and... I mean that's just like I almost tell people I'm like forget me look at the like look at the just the color the layout the like you know the it's just awesome you know that's the kind of stuff that moves me not oh my god how good looking is that person or look how perfect they look or whatever you know that's that to me that picture is more about the guitar and the sunset than it is me or, you know if you ask personally you know yeah we <laughs> um, you know, you try to capture the moment. Sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes, uh, you know, you 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 got to go jump through hoops to to make it happen. But that shoot just kind of 
you know, we planned it out, and it, it just fell into place perfectly, you know. I mean, yeah, we had about five do? or six minutes. But what do you do when it's not that easy? I mean, what do you do when you get somebody who's, <clears throat> I don't know, who's just not, there's no, you don't have that vibe, you don't have that connect, there's something there, and you're kind of, I mean, maybe it works in your advantage, I don't know, you tell me. Well, you have to, um, you know, sometimes you, you you just have to get the best that you can get with whatever person you're working with. I mean, some people are <clears throat> very famous. I won't mention any names. But some people are very, very famous, and they are not photogenic and don't know how to act in front of a camera whatsoever. So you, you know, you're um, you have to work with what you with what you get, and you just make the best of it, and then hope that you. And I don't think I've ever not gotten something that I that I liked, and just the, the the artist liked or whatever, but there are definitely those who are who are incredibly easy to work with and incredibly fun, like you. And there are <clears throat> those who are, you know, not at all. You know, there are those who are very difficult, very very difficult to work with. Are you saying <laughs> men more than women? Is there a do you find um, some kind of? It's all right, um, now. you're on radio. Nobody can see you and touch you, so you can be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I would say, I don't know. That's a very good question. Um, I've had my share of both that that are very very hard to, you know, to make look good in front of a camera and make look more so than I don't know the good sort, but to make look natural. That's what I try to go for. It's, I don't like to pose people. If I pose you, you look like you're posed. I'm not one of these idiot photographers that has a book of poses that they bring along with them. And, and that's seriously, that's a real thing. There's, you know, there are books that have poses. So I just try to let people do what they do, and then I catch it as a photographer, right. and I catch what I see, and um, <clears throat> that's. You know, the perfect example is the ones that we did at Sunset with, you know, with, uh, you know, with the lighting. I mean, it, it was just, it was just perfect. The most expensive lighting in the world could not have yeah. done that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? we didn't have any lights. We just looked. We're like waiting, waiting. We're like, okay, move now, shoot now, shoot now. We had like five minutes. And, and I had been talking to Michael about this for some time. And each time he came to town, it just never worked out. And so I was, it was a big deal when I got done because I literally had this vision in my head. I'm like... Look, this is a spot where I used to climb and hike when I was in high school and come up here, and people would come up there and smoke weed. It was like just this big perch on top of this hill, <laughs> high hill, way behind my house. And right. and so I always mm-hmm. wanted to take pictures up there. And he, he totally got it. There's more there's there's more than that shoot that are different, like the sunset's in a different place and all that. But I was kind of like, I don't know what to do. I mean, like it was it was odd because without knowing the light and knowing how to stand and how you look, it's like, you know, and that's – that's a great photographer who's able to ease you into that because you can't see yourself. I'm sure you can go nowadays, you can go behind the camera and you look in the, you learn a little bit when you're taking pictures, but in the end, right. it's really, it's his eyes. If he sees something, you got to hope that he's, if he's telling you to move your shoulder, certainly you're hoping, okay, I feel odd, really odd standing here, but, because there was a couple of shots that we took, actually, that were like that, that he wanted me to turn a certain way, and it felt odd standing that way, but the picture doesn't show it. Right. The picture's natural. Is, now, so, is, is that the photo that you sent me, Michael, of Mark, the one with the orange like sunset the and him standing there? It's from that shoot, but it's not. Yes, that's not what I'm okay. talking about. Yeah, we took like okay. I don't know. I mean, we only had a few minutes, but we changed positions a couple of times, and so there's sometimes that you can see more of the LA landscape than you can the sunset. Yeah. And, you know. But I'd you always to wanted to, so that was a big deal for me to do that because I really wanted to take pictures up there and go. God, hope hope. We can convey what I said, Michael. I hope I kept telling him, like, I really hope I'm making sense of what I want by telling because I explained it in the most lame in terms that I could, but he got it yeah. and nailed it. One of my favorite things. Ever. But you, I think you wanted, you know, you told me that you wanted people to see what we saw, and I think that's what we both created exactly. was, was yeah. exactly that. And you know, sometimes wow. I, I will tell you that it has to, uh, you know, several times throughout my career, I've had to do photo shoots very, very, very quickly, and especially when you're dealing with celebrities or you're dealing with rock stars or whatever. They don't have the time and they don't have the patience. And uh, I just did a photo shoot with uh, with Robbie Krieger, the drummer from The Doors, um, I guess about there. four months ago. Um, 
Not Krieger, I'm sorry. Um, Manzarek. Oh, no, Manzarek. Not Manzarek. Manzarek passed away. John, not, yeah. Was it Manzarek Man or, or, or Jens Moore? <laughs> yes, John did. What's wrong with me? I'm, I'm getting them mixed up here. I'm, so uh, we did Densmore, and uh, right. I, that photo shoot happened completely in less than five minutes, and it was incredible. It was amazing. Um, but, I mean, sometimes you, 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 you definitely don't have the best of conditions, and uh, sometimes the conditions are absolutely horrible, and you just have to, you know, you have to make it work uh, regardless of the situation. If you're uh, right. one thing about this this profession, if your heart's not into it, you you, you just it'll show very quickly, and uh, you you can't do it. What do you mean There's by that? No way. You what do you to, mean by that? As far as like a passion really, for it, kind of thing. Yeah, you have to have a, a deep passion for it because it's uh, it's not easy. It's not as simple as just pointing a camera. And you know, these days people have gotten the idea that you can just buy a cell phone and you're a photographer. But it's, well, sure it is, but you're saying that it's not as easy as that, but They've created it to feel and simulate right. the same feeling that a photographer gets when he's thinking yeah. about exposure. And, you know, I mean, that's that's what they've done, really, right? I yeah, mean, that's, Sam and that's I, we spoke earlier, we talked about that, and just like you don't even need a camera now; you just need a good phone with really good yeah. pixels, you know, right? And, I and she said, she's, I, I never take a good yeah. picture. I never take a good picture." <laughs> Well, I mean, with no, iPhone, I don't. You, you no matter what I do, my photos always blow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with your phone. I'm beginning yeah, to think I'm there's. Gonna... I've never met a person who couldn't take a perfect picture on a phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm just things, technically um, challenged. That's it. So, <laughs> at some at some point in the next six months, I'm going to start actually teaching um, uh, cell phone photography courses. So, you know, I, I love the whole concept, and, uh, you know, people don't have to go through all the crap that I did when I first got started with film and with these big-ass expensive cameras and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in equipment. And, I mean, you don't have to do that. But, you know, keep in mind, if you're if you're getting married or if you're, if you're doing something that's, you know, really, really important, you want to use a photographer with a real camera. You don't want to use someone with a cell phone right. or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. It's great right. for Facebook and for friends and stuff like that. And I mean, I've seen some of the most amazing, amazing, amazing pictures that have been taken with cell phones. But you just have well, to you remember that band with Panic at the Disco or something like that, one big band, they did their entire video on iPhone. This is back, I think they were four or three S's. They did their entire video right. like that. It was a big deal. Yeah. Like They just went to show, like, with a little ingenuity and some creativity, you know, and, and a really high-tech, you know, piece of gear is what you can do as a photographer, you know, as a right. make, make videos, whatever. I mean, we've Michael and I have talked on that many times from the artist's point of view, whether it be him or me, just like the ease of being able to do all this stuff. And then when before you really learned and it was an art form and you, in whatever manner you studied it, and now you don't have to. No. <laughs> you just have to push a button on a, on a camera. So there is more to it than that. I mean, you can't you can't actually call. I, You know, personally, I don't consider someone with a, a cell phone a photographer, quote, unquote. Um, but you can take incredible photographs, like I said. And, I, and, you know, I have one myself, so I love taking photos with it. But I, I couldn't show up at a, at a real paying gig with a right. cell phone. I mean, I would be sent yeah. hacking. <laughs> you know. Well, what if you had, they like, would show you the four door of them. real quick. <laughs> yeah. What if you had, like, four of them and they were in, like, really fancy cases? Maybe they'd believe you've had, you know, if you had a Samsung and yeah. an iPhone. And <laughs> maybe then they'd be impressed. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Next time I do a big shoot with you, I'm going to bring out, I'm going to whip out my iPhone. Excuse me while I whip this out, yeah. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you did. One of the test pictures was on my phone, and it's very similar to the one that came out. <laughs> wow. I can't even remember. You did a test remember. picture, remember? You did a test picture, and it came uh, out yeah, great. Yeah, you know what? I did. I did. The good thing about the iPhone yeah. that the uh, the other one doesn't have is, is the focusing. It's the uh, ability to, to focus on certain things. I, I like that more than I like the uh, the Android. But they have. Well, maybe you know, that's I mean, my problem. Have, I always have an Android, so maybe that's what no, I'm doing. No, get an wrong. iPhone. Yeah, you should get an iPhone. Yeah, oh, you have. <laughs> Why I, I are like you on an Android? I never. Yeah. That's a whole another discussion for another show. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. get in trouble or anything. But. 
Yeah. Well, let's hold on for a Zoom second because we do have a caller calling in, except okay. I don't know who it is. So Ooh, um, it's area code 336, <laughs> and the first three numbers is 859. So you're live on the air. Oh. Hi, Mike. It's Roy. How you doing? What's happening, Roy? How are you, buddy? Not much. Not much. I hadn't, I've hadn't. i been listening to a little of the show. I didn't know if you had talked about uh, your book yet. I was going to ask you how... Uh, how it's going? Uh, everything is going pretty. Everything is going pretty good. What Roy's talking about is I am currently working on a coffee table book of celebrities to uh, benefit the National Suicide and Lifeline. It's a. It's basically based on the concept behind is everyone involved are advocates of suicide prevention. Um, most everybody, especially at our age, has had a friend or loved one, somebody that's, you know, taken their life and decided not to go on. And um, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, I mean, I've known you for a long time, Roy. So, yeah. you know, for years and years, I always thought I want to do a, I want to do a book on my, on my rock and roll photography. You know, with all the rock stars. And I, I mean, I've got a, probably enough photos to do twenty books. Um, but I threw that around and threw it around, and but it's it, number one, it's a very very expensive concept. You, uh, I don't know if you've looked into it, but it's to, expensive to or produce, expensive. <clears throat> expensive. It's it's very expensive to publish a book. And one day, I guess about a year and a half ago, I was just thinking about it, and I thought, well, you know what, I haven't. I, I was thinking in my life, I was like, have I ever done anything? you know, really, really good for other people, somebody other than myself. And um, so I thought, well, I'd like to do something and donate the money to a charity. <clears throat> and at first, you know, the first thought was breast cancer. But uh, breast cancer has, I think, and I'm not saying that it doesn't need much more funding, but I think that it probably has more funding than just about any charity. And, uh you know, heart but disease the top runs three, in, at least, I think you're right. Right, right. Heart Almost disease runs did. in my family. Um, but one of the things that really, that was really close to me and touched me was um, suicide prevention. And, uh, you know, one of my very best friends of just about my entire life, um, since I was probably, I guess, 12 years old or something like that, um, was bipolar and he had been on medicine and you know if you don't know anything about that stuff it's very very powerful and he just got tired of taking it and he shot himself and uh wow. he didn't he didn't use a high caliber weapon so he did not die right off the bat so luckily I was able to I don't know if it was really lucky but I was able to see him in the hospital before he uh before he died and you know he was incoherent he couldn't move but he the one thing that he could do he couldn't open his eyes he he could hear and uh so i was able to tell him that i loved him and uh you know a tear rolled down his face and you know later that night they took him off of uh life support and he died and you know throughout the years i've known other people that were friends that have that have done it or I know probably several that have tried to do it. Um uh the country star Minnie McCready last year, I worked with her several times. Yeah. I um, remember that we had one a was, Yeah, I never uh I I wouldn't have guessed it. But you know I wouldn't have guessed it with my with my friend Matthew that did it. I, I didn't I wasn't paying attention. So I, I didn't know well, what that's to look what a lot that's what a lot of people don't realize. I mean, I've been in the medical field for 22 years. The what ones do you do? That are, I, right now I'm a medical assistant. I was a paramedic for 10 years. But um, the ones that uh, the ones that are going to do it are the ones that you find out afterwards. The ones that yeah, they usually, don't talk about it. Yeah, the ones usually are going, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, or wanting help or attention. Right. But the ones who do... 
they internalize everything, and that's the ones that you find, you know, like Robin Williams, like Mimi <clears throat> Street. Yeah. You know, and I was people. blown away when uh, when Robin Williams did it. I just I was just blown completely away. I cried for probably three days straight. I'm still and, amazed. Uh, it was how it was many horrible. people I've heard that from. I'm amazed how many people. I've never in my life heard any comedian die in here. So many people say what you just said, that they were literally emotionally torn apart by this man taking his life. Not dying, but taking his life because he symbolized hope in yeah. oh, so absolutely. many different ways. Yeah, well, and we grew up we grew up with this guy from most you know, most of us most of us were kids during the Mork and Mindy days and oh, right, yeah. we right. kinda grew up with him. He was like, you know, he was like a part of the family. And yep. yeah. um, my kids, I have teenage kids. They I mean, Miss Doubtfire, I mean Oh yeah, love yeah. Aladdin. Yeah, oh my god, that was yeah, absolutely. So it was it was you know amazing. That, that's powerful. His, his best movie to me, and you guys, I don't know if most people haven't even seen it, but it's a movie called um, The Survivors with Walter Matthau and Jerry Reed. Oh, yeah. If you ever if you ever get a chance to see it, <laughs> my God, you have to check it out. <clears throat> but I'll be honest, I haven't been able to watch one of these movies since he died, and that's what I want to do in the next week or so is be able to sit back down and watch. I mean, literally, I was... I mean, I was completely just devastated. I mean, it was it was absolutely horrible for somebody that that I haven't met physically in my life. <clears throat> I felt like I I knew him like he was a brother, and you know, I've I've worked with several several people that actually worked with him, and and you know, nobody had had a bad uh, story about him. I mean, he was. He was incredible, but I mean, just the burden that he carried was just too heavy, you know. Well, so, but anyway, an interesting choice of words, you know. I mean, so true. It's just an interesting choice of words. You never know how much somebody is carrying, you know, on their shoulders, and uh, you know, like Matthew and and uh, and Mindy and Mork and Mindy, Matthew and okay. Mindy, and 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 all the other people that unfortunately have done that or tried it. <clears throat> you just just never know and I was wrapped up in my own life and was not paying attention but what I'm doing is you know I'm putting together the book and uh, everybody that's that's shooting for the book everybody's going to do their 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 photo session and they're going to they're going to tell their story of you know whoever they may have lost or however they've been affected by it and they're going to dedicate their photo shoots and when it's published, I'm going to, um, you know, going to donate 100% of the profits to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So that's that's, awesome. that's the deal. We've been talking about this for some time because I, mean, I think the reason that Michael mentioned um, Robbie Krieger is because a, a good friend, a good friend of mine, Ty Dennis, played with the last incarnation of whatever Doors band you saw for the last 10 years. So he was pretty tight with Robbie, and we tried to make this. This time last year, we tried to make it happen, didn't we, Michael? And it didn't. Yes, and yes. his Bobby's schedule didn't didn't coincide. But he's coming. Michael's coming to town for a couple of weeks, so we're gonna get we're gonna get hopefully Robbie to to um, to participate. And I'm gonna make some calls to some friends. And you know, yeah. it's it's a few minutes out of your time. There's no propaganda here. There's no agenda. It's just a you know, mixing art with you know with you know a good cause. You know, I think it's great. So. Yeah, and it's um, it's for it's for a great great cause. So <clears throat> it's fun. It's a lot of fun, and uh, so that's my reason for doing it. You know, it helps people, and I really enjoy it. It's it's a passion, and uh, there you go. So very cool. Well, Thanks for calling. Yeah, hopefully, I can help you with that. Hey, hopefully I I'll appreciate. Be able to it. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you too. Are you gonna Are you gonna be able to make it to a Mad Monster Party this year? Yes, I am. My roommate is uh whoa, 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 what's call that? It. The Mad Monster Party is like a uh it's a horror movie convention. There's lots of horror actors and stuff like that. <clears throat> um a lot of actors, a lot of celebrities, makeup artists, stuff like that are gonna be there. And my, Oh yeah, they're gonna do a uh they're doing a Fright Night reunion this year with uh Sarandon's gonna be there, Amanda Beers from Married with Children who was in it she's going to be there they're going to 
Well, everybody, everybody except for Roddy McDowell, unfortunately, you know, he, we lost him many years right, ago. Right. But all the rest of the guys cool. are going to be there. But I didn't know I didn't Connor know this about you. Mike. I didn't great. know you had a fascination with uh, horror movies. What did you say? I said I didn't know you had this uh, this other side of you that had this fascination with yeah with horror. <laughs> oh God, I love uh, horror movies. I'm a huge next to photography. I'm a huge, huge, huge horror fan fanatic. Some of my some of my good buddies are actually uh, serial killers. <laughs> In the movie. No. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, I'm glad you added, added the movie part. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it was an odd yeah. pause there, Michael. Yeah. It was an odd pause. Yeah. A couple of them played, the first, uh, played the, Michael Myers the first, and, yeah. and Jason and stuff like that. So That's what I started to say. The first <laughs> the first convention we went to, he was hanging out with, Jay, with uh, Jason, Michael Myers, and Leo from Charmed. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And <laughs> what I was saying is my roommate is uh, – Connor McCullough, who was he was the uh, winner of the first season of Face Off, so he's a special effects artist. He uh, he works on it. He's one of the best that you know walks the earth. He uh, wow. he just worked on uh, Catching Fire Part Three and Four. He did Hunger Games. He did Freddy vs. Jason. You know, it's tons of stuff. So he's he's you know worked with pretty much the biggest people in the world. And that's what he does. So he's going to be setting up, he's going to be doing a presentation, like a makeup presentation at Mad Monster Party. So that'll oh, be very right. cool. Excellent. So I'll be wow. there. For the so whole is it like three day. days long, that kind of thing, or just a day? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it is. You should come out for yeah. it, Mark. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I'll fly you out on my, uh, on my Learjet. Private right? jet? All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I yeah. like horror movies. I'd probably, that's probably something I would be into doing. I don't know. Maybe I'd like it, but I would, I'd definitely do it once. It sounds like a hoot. Sounds like a lot of fun. That would be very cool. Yeah, it is come a lot down, of fun. You should come out for it. As a matter of fact, I'll send my jet right now. It's on the way. You know, it'll be there in about two hours. <laughs> I got to go, guys. I got to pack. See you later. Yeah. Well, it's good to talk to you, Mike. I'll get off of here so somebody else can get on. Thanks a lot, Lori. Man. We'll, see, we'll see you soon, buddy. All right, nice man. You right. Thanks, Take right. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> now, where is this held at, this mad monster well, thing? Well, this one, this one's going to be Secret location, Charlotte. Yeah, I can't tell you. Yeah, it's going to be in Charlotte um, <laughs> somewhere. <clears throat> it's madmonsterparty.com. Um, and a couple of my buddies are coming to it. One of them is, uh, did you guys ever see the movie Saul? Saul? Another really, really crazy horror movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, movie Saul, with, Saul. Yeah, you saw those. Do you get that southern drawl. It's so hard to understand. I know, right? <laughs> it almost sounded oh, like wow. I'm saying it right now, Michael. I know Pam's <laughs> thinking it. I'm saying it right now. <laughs> is it? Is it that bad, really? Seriously? No. Come on now. Over the phone, awe <laughs> aw is a little hard to hear. <laughs> okay. I guess. Well. But yes, uh, I'm familiar with the Saw movies. I don't know if I'm <laughs> No, I don't watch those kind of movies. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Yeah, so one of one of my buddies is, uh, was, was in, in those movies, and he played the detective. He's He may call in later. I don't know what his schedule is tonight, but he's going to be there. Another guy that was um, Michael Myers is going to be there. I mean, there's going to be, like, a ton of people there. So, yeah, it's a fun thing. But, you know, they have Comic-Con. Right. One of these, I tell you what, the next, next time, the next Comic-Con, I'll fly out and the two of us will go to that if you want to go to now, it. Now, Comic-Con is, I am aware of. I, I've, I've never been to that you. before, so I'd like Yeah, because to of that, and actors, I mean, some of these actors in some of these huge cult films, I mean, it's a big deal. It's, I mean, yeah, San Diego, I don't I think it just happened Months ago, and it's it's getting large. It's it's almost getting bigger yeah. than the Music Nam convention. It's like it's yeah, it is quite a thing at Comic Con. It's a lot cool. A lot well, let me let me interrupt you guys because I have okay. a uh, number here for somebody okay. calling in. Except the phone number is not showing, so I'm not sure okay. who it is. <laughs> All right. Top secret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> caller, Top you're on the air. <laughs> um, hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi. I'm like Hello? obsessed with Michael Strider. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <It's up. laughs> That's what they all say. <laughs> that is, that is the intro. That is and the what's intro. your name, little girl? Oh, little girl. Am I a little girl now? <laughs> you want some candy? <laughs> I don't know, Michael. Can you guess? <laughs> but 
get the voice. I think I, I, think I can <laughs> Hi, guys. How are Hi, you? You look, you guys Hi. Are like having a lot of fun. You sound like you're yeah. having a good time. Who is this? What's your name? I'm Matt. This is Marty. Um, uh, my name is Augie. Yes, Augie. this is Augie. Augie. Oh. She is my it's buddy Augie and Duke. actress and play. It's Augie Duke. She's for our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, okay. So I don't know. So in, in, I, first of all, that's an awesome name. I don't know where it stems from, but I don't even know how it's spelled, but it's a really, that's a great name. Thank you, Tell buddy. Tell me what your, what your name I. is. Either do what, I. What? Tell me what your, what your full name is, Augie. Oh, my full name is Augustine, which is uh, even uh, like, but that's nickname. so like, it, I, when I'm like 50, that's when I'll use that name. Sounds so right now, like, <laughs> You know what I mean? It's too, it's too magnificent. Is Augustine normally followed by St. Augustine or preceded by Saint? Yeah, I can't do that yet. I'm not there. You know what I mean? I'm not no, there you got to wait. You got a saint that. yet? Thanks, Michael. Yeah, you got a long <laughs> ways to go. No, so we, we, we know you in anything in films or commercials or. Yeah, I do a bunch of TV and film, random stuff, constantly popping up in weird stuff. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> I mean, is that? Well, I'm just saying, Angelina much the same Jolie. Thing, right? Angelina Jolie calls Augie for advice. That's that's how big Augie is. Oh yeah, uh, Keely. Like all yeah. the time. I have to <laughs> take her off the ledge of nine kids. She's like, What am I gonna do? I wanna have another one and I'm like, You can't. Too many kids. <laughs> <laughs> Back number to call you for advice, Augie. Yeah, there is you do know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Oh man, so you guys are located in Chicago, right? No, we're all over the place. I am. I'm in Southern California. I'm, I'm in Chicago. Mark is in California, and of course, you know where where Michael is. So, and where are you? Are you in mm-hmm. California? I'm in LA. Yeah, I'm in LA. An LA native, born and raised. Really? Born and raised. Yeah. So, born and so raised. Are you? I'm from. Well, I I was born I was born in the hospital called St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica. Yeah. Um. I'm actually, right now, I'm currently at my dad's house. I was waiting for, like, a stove for him to come or something. He's like, can you go to my house and wait for a stove or something? And they never came. So I'm like, where's your stove at, Dad? It's not here. So I'm at my dad's house. So someone needs to bring the stove to you? Oh, my God. Wait, Michael, you need to tell them where you're staying at. Do they know that you're staying when you come to L.A. where you're staying? I'm gonna say um, a few. I'm, I'm gonna say probably half the time at um, Jim Morrison's old apartment, which oh, is yeah. incredibly cool. It's in uh, it's in Hollywood, and um, I don't. Augie, you haven't seen it yet, have you? You haven't. You didn't no, come there last No, I'm time. a little okay. frightened by that, but I'll come. Maybe. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna love it. You'll get chills when you first walk in, and um, oh, that's exciting. But after a little while, you'll be fine. Just oh, focus on the day. I know, that's night. what I'm thinking too. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you're on the same page. Shoot there, Mike. Uh, Michael and I, we're, we're, we're trying friends. to do a shoot there. Hopefully that's going to happen. Oh, oh good. Yeah. He's amazing. Oh. Yeah, we did some awesome pictures together. He's an amazing photographer. I mean, he's okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, oh, she went to go to my head or anything. Yeah, and we shot a few times together. So. Seen oh, amazing. cool. Very, Augie very has cool. a way of keeping me grounded. She keeps me. Oh, good. She keeps my feet on the ground. I'm like when I, I remember when I first met her. I was like, oh, god. oh my god, who is this girl that breaks my balls like crazy? This girl, I, I've got my hands still over here. This girl was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, she keeps. Show me a girl who doesn't from. break your balls, okay? Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Me, that's true. She keeps that's me what grounded I for sure. So. It's um, that's what I need. <laughs> I'm just not like I'm just not very uh, what's the word? I think it's because I grew up with brothers. I'm just not very high maintenance. You know, I'm just kind of like, oh hey, what's up? He came over and I was probably in my pajamas or something, looking like a bum. And you're like, hey, I would think, yeah. I would think the brothers thing is exactly why you're probably like that because you just kind yeah. of sort of want to mm-hmm. avoid the role with everything. Yeah, the only thing is I don't fart and burp all the time. <laughs> no. Hold it, hold it, rewind. What did you say? <laughs> I said, I do not. not. Quote me now. I do not fart and burp ever. Never in my life have I ever farted and burped. That's right. You don't fart. I'm so classy. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't do that stuff at all. No, No. never. 
No. No, what if I just did? (laughs) Oh, what if I Lord. But she's not so, Augie, anyway. do you have any do you have any things coming up? Any projects you'd like to share with us? Any plugs? I always have something coming up. It's so funny. It's like, yeah, I have something coming up. Um, yeah, this movie I did like about my oh God, it feels like five or six months ago. It's gonna be actually in theaters, supposedly, is what I'm hearing. It's called Awaken. Oh, wow. We're all like stuck on an island and it's like have you seen the show Lost? Remember the show Lost? Yeah. 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 It's that. It's pretty much that. Um <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what this movie is. And, uh, yeah, it's with, like, Vinnie Jones and Edward Furlong and Daryl Hannah and um, Natalie per- Byrne is the producer and also the lead in it. And, um, I, right. Yeah. And then cool. little old doggies in it, too. So, yeah, that'll be coming out. Cool. It's called Awaken. Tell me about yeah. – my roommate actually worked with Vinnie Jones one time a long time ago. Tell me about <laughs> – do you have any, any – Okay, so my agent is – a Brit, and so is Vinnie Jones. And she's like, oh, my God, I know Vinny. Go tell him you say hello. Tonya's your agent. And I was like, oh, oh for sure. Goodness. So I literally walk into his trailer like I could care less. And I'm like, hey. And he's like, oh, so you just walk into my trailer like it's your fucking trailer. And he's hilarious. And right <laughs> right off the bat, we got along because I'm kind of a smart ass, and so is he. So it worked out perfectly. But imagine... Like, if it didn't work out, I would be so embarrassed. I just walked in, didn't even knock on your trailer. It was, like, very unpretentious. I just kind of walked in. Like, could care less. But Holy this is a cool guy. You're the smart ass. Oh <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so are you. Isn't that like um, Ozzy Osbourne being kind of an alcoholic? Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. Oh, my. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Did I hear? Oh, who? Who's an alcoholic? <laughs> That's like Ozzy calling Ozzy Osbourne. Kind of an alcoholic. Oh, okay, whatever. Well, <laughs> okay. I guess I'm kind of a smart ass. Yeah, but, you are uh, kind of. Yeah, it's no, okay, he's though. super cool. Super cool dude. Edward Furlong is super interesting, super cool guy, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would think interesting. I do, but I, you know what? I give. I think Edward's cool. I mean, obviously, he's been through a lot. He's a child actor. Um, right. So he's been through a lot, but I think he's doing better. I think he's doing good. I think he is, too, now. He's at least He's hilarious. He's super talented, so. Yeah. And then there's this pilot I did recently, too, called, Mm -hmm. they keep on changing the name, but I think they're going to be calling it Orphans of the Void. Um, It takes place in the future, and it's super, super fun, and I think, you know, cross our fingers, they want to, you know, pitch it to, like, networks, like Netflix and stuff like that, so. Well, Augie did um, Bad Kids Go to Hell, which is on... Netflix now too, right? Isn't it on Netflix? Oh, Bad, Bad Kids, Kids Go, to, Go hell? to Hell. Is everyone there still? I yeah. think it's still yeah. on there. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> like it was just like the crickets all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> they fell asleep. We're listening They're like, this to is you. the most uninteresting conversation in the world. I'm <laughs> no. going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are yeah, bad kids you, is fun. So. <laughs> I feel but like Augie, Augie you is know, actually gonna she's gonna try her hand at photography too. She's quite the photographer, from what I understand. So we're gonna. Well, let's hope just, so. I just need yeah, to steal your camera gonna, and then turn it around on you because I want to take good pictures I'm, of Michael. He's always taking pictures of people, and I'm like, it's my turn. I want to take a picture of you. I know you don't meet too many oh, photographers that, cool. that want that, right? Yeah, yeah. She, wants take, she wants to do a shoot. Learn to be things, narcissistic so I, I, like the I'm rest gonna, of us. Come on, man. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a selfie pro, so I know that I'm, like, really good at pictures then. You know, oh, if you're God, a selfie yes, you pro, are. you can take, like, a bomb selfie of yourself and make it, like, you know what I'm saying, like, hot, then you know I don't even know how to describe that phenomenon anymore. <laughs> Just that, that, that's turned into such a phenomenon. That's crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, it's amazing, but she, you know, yeah. you have a picture I remember the picture. There's one that you took where you were driving down the road, and I was like, oh, my God, that's better than any of the pictures that I took. So well, I, I wasn't was driving. Don't say I was driving because that's not safe. I was yeah. stopped oh, yeah. parked. That's right. You were pulled over <laughs> on the side of the road. I was definitely you. parked, kids. Yeah, because that would be illegal, so you wouldn't do that. No. no. Especially not in California. No. Especially not in yeah, right. Anyway, so much take a picture of Michael Strider. <laughs> <laughs> so cool, All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. 
Well, I love you guys. I have to go because I feel like I need to get my life together. But it was a pleasure. Yeah, and go. Me- nice meeting you, Augie. You too. I'm going to go hang out with my dad for five Thanks. seconds and tell him how fabulous he is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my I'll God, you, you guys. In, I, that's the weirdest thing I'll see you in three ever. weeks, too. Oh, yeah. He's so excited. He's coming to L.A. He's, he's Can so you excited. tell? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe oh I'll be God, playing one night when you're out here, Michael. You have to drag Augie you down one night. Um, I said I'll, maybe I'll be playing one night when you're out here and you can drag Augie out. I would I'll, love that. That would be really, yeah, really we'll cool. That. We'll do yeah. that. Yeah. We're gonna, I will uh, kidnap her and bring her down to your show. That will be great. Awesome. She would love that. Cool. That sounds frightening. <laughs> we'll I know, you right? Yeah. That, <laughs> to the show. Horse in place. Oh, you say, you're going to have a time. The time of your life, you know? <laughs> okay. I love you all. A pleasure meeting you. Love you, Michael. Thank I'll talk you. to you soon. Take care, you guys. You uh, thank you for calling bye. in. Bye-bye. Of course. Bye, of course. <laughs> Well, we do have another caller, and it's another number I do not know. So here we go. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Oh, uh. yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get it to open up. Uh, area code nine five four, and the first three numbers is two one four. You're live on the air. Hey, how you doing, Michael? It's George down in South Florida. <laughs> What's up, George? How are you, brother? I'm just freezing to death down here in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, it's like we are in California. Dude, it's like 60 here. We're dying. Oh, good Lord. Oh, my 60? God. <laughs> <laughs> He's dying at 60? Oh, my God. Yeah, we're, we don't know what to do with ourselves over here. We're all bundled up in ski jackets and scarves and boots, and it's 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 pretty heinous. We're all afraid to go outside. You need to come to North Carolina where it's like 35. Hold on a second. Let me see how warm it is. It's got to be like... It's probably forty five maybe. So it's not too bad. I haven't checked the report. Yeah, well I mean, it's like forty five below here, so no whining from really any of you. There? Where are yeah. you guys um, at? I'm in Chicago. It's it's twenty seven right now. I got um uh, wow. But at yeah. least it's a cold or above snow. zero. Yeah, exactly. Above zero You're on the right side and, of the and that's that's our yeah. That's our bathing suit weather. <laughs> it's warm oh, for us. Oh Lord! <laughs> My brother just came down from Spokane, Washington. He's like, when it gets like you know twenty thirty, everybody's got their shirts off because normally it's like two five, right, fifteen, right. right like right. oh, it's thirty. Well, everybody, you know, pop out the lotion. You should have your shirt off because oh, it's so damn humid there that it's like anytime you put. The, I've been to Florida so many times in my life. I. Nothing against you, man. I'm just not a fan of Florida. <laughs> I can't take the humidity. I just cannot take the humidity. Well, this time yeah. of year, it, with the cooler air, it dries a bone. It's really like Cali weather. So it's like everybody, you know, I talk to my friends here. They're like, wow, this is, I go, this is Cali weather, guys. This is, if you've been out there, this is what it's like. Cause it's very dry right now. And the skies are blue and it's crisp and, you know, clean. It's nice. Right. When are you going back to L.A., George? Um, I'm taking care of some family business here. I came down originally my uncle passed away. Right. And um, okay. two weeks has turned into three and a half months. I've got a ton of work to do. With my, my parents are selling the house. I'm helping them move out and all that kind of stuff. Taking care of, taking care of some uh, business while I'm down here, making a couple dollars, and I'll probably be coming back end of February. Gotcha. What do you do for a living? Oh, well, how do you know each other? Work? Yeah, Michael, how do we know each other? <laughs> how do we know each other? We met through a... Makeup artist. <clears throat> Maria. Melotis? Meliotis. She was supposed to work out with me tonight. She chickened out. She's in, I thought she was in New York. She's in Florida? She just got back in today. She caught, like, the last flight out before they got buried. Oh, yeah, that's oh, terrible. Wow, I do not want to be there right now. Yeah, so yeah. she's all, you know, she, she's been begging me to get on a health kick and start training her, so she was supposed to come into the gym. I just got back from the gym. We we're going to work out tonight, a bunch of us. And uh, it got late for her, but yeah, that's how we met. But we haven't officially met yet in person. No, we haven't met in person yet. We didn't get to meet the last time I was in L.A. Um, yeah. And I'm going out in a few weeks, but I don't know if you're going to be back. <clears throat> by the, I'm, I'm, I think I'm there from the 15th to the 23rd, I believe. 15th Something to the like 23rd. That. So you may not be back yet. 
I don't think I'm going to be back. And I just got asked by some friends. They want me to go out on a monster um, fishing tournament in Bimini for four days on the 22nd. And they're going to be like, it's the bomb man trip to Bimini. It's going to be insane chaos. The fishing's out of control. And it's like to pass something up like that. I'd be, I'd be, it'd yeah. be like suicide. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty so, heavy, man. Well, it's a, it's like a, time. it's like a once a lifetime trip and the, the fish is going to be out of control. And uh, I fished these guys a few times before I'm used to the high seas. So they're like, bro, you got to come with us here in town. I'm like, I think I might have to stay for that. So it might be my last hurrah and then I'll be on the way back to Burbank. Yeah. Wow, well, the next time that I'm out, you you know, hopefully you'll be out there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you got a job you got, you got a job you're doing out there or. I'm just, uh, well, I'm out there this time, I'm just working on my book. You know, the one that I'm doing, the coffee table book that I'm doing for the uh, Suicide Permission Charity. So that's right. basically what I'm doing. And, you know, not to mention, I mean, obviously, it's a strip for fun. I'm not going to relax and get away from the day job and, uh, you know, hang out. Just get away, you know what I mean? Sometimes no, absolutely. So he's getting away to oh. L.A., where it's chaos. Yep. Getting away yeah, to and L.A. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling... I'm feeling orphaned here, you know. You guys are all going to L.A. talking about it. Well, let's have fun, and hey. here's Cam sitting here well, in Chicago. Hey, no one's, no one's stopping you from coming to L.A.? Snowed in <laughs> with Cabin <laughs> Fever. Just, just tunnel, tunnel your way out, <laughs> hop on a plane, and come on out. Have you been to L.A. before? Have you before been to L.A. Before, before, Pam? I have, before I forget it, i got to say yeah, hi I, to Radar. So I almost forgot it there. I'm sorry, Radar. But anyway, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been to Cal- I've been to California quite a few times because I have family out there. So uh, they live in Riverside, and I love it out oh. there. My kids, when I when I brought them out when we were young, when they were young, they was like, "We have to move here." I said, "Sure, make a lot of money, and we'll move here." Oh, jeez. Well, how long, how long do you have true. to? It is not cheap. It is not cheap. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's killing me out there. I'm, I'm still like I'm pretty much an immigrant still. How long do you have to be out there to consider like like with it? I don't I don't know. I've only been there now. Just this month just actually marked the four the four year marker for me, and I'm feeling pretty uh, adjusted. See, it's four, around. four and a half years. Four and a half years. Four and a half. You're close. Yeah. <laughs> Six months. I'm not just, there yet. I'm getting close. You're close. I'm just letting you know you're close. That's all. I I've never <laughs> spent so much money on tickets and gas in my life. Oh yeah, you know that's, a, that's an in- budding industry out here. Tickets, parking tickets. It's out of yeah. control. They don't even, and they don't even pull you over. They just mail it to you. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not be like that, but it's such an expensive town, and you know they get the city's got to make money and pay for all this crap here and these new roads and freeways, and that's what they do it by seventy five dollar tickets. You know, it's crazy. They've been on the four hundred five since I moved there. They've been trying to. They've been working on the four hundred five. I don't know if it's done yet. Sure, well, one part of it is just stupid. yeah. I mean, more it's people are going to more roads. Like, Mark, the first time that I met you, <laughs> the second day when, when I woke up, I, I, I hung out and spent the night at Mark's uh, apartment because I had to have a place to crash for a couple of nights when I was doing photo shoots a few years right. back. And uh, this, the, the, we woke up in the morning oh, and we're right. hanging out. And, yeah, we're watching yeah, the Led Zeppelin. And I was like, yeah, this is great, man. This is incredible. And I get up and I go, what the hell's on my windshield? And he's like, dude, that's a parking ticket. I was like, what the, yeah. f- what the hell is this about? <laughs> like, well, we live across the street from the university, and if you park on, on, on street cleaning day, it's a $73 ticket. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I live in the saying, suburbs. It's not like I live in a yeah. city where there's like skyscrapers around and all this you know, yeah. demand for parking. It's just, yeah, it's brutal out here. I really got to figure out which side to park on what day. Yeah, like Thursday. I mean, you get you get a ticket here in Hollywood if you park on a hill and you don't look at the sign, don't turn your wheels in. You know, if you park oh, on a hill, God. you're supposed to turn your. I yeah, you literally yeah. get it. It's it, yeah. You know, I mean, that's how bad it is here. Yeah, it's crazy. So, maybe they're the giving me thing, tickets. I don't know, but that's... Oh, man, no, it's such a it's just like bliss out here. I, I I get on the highway here. I can close my eyes and let go of the wheel and just like for thirty seconds, I won't even run into anything. It's like there's nobody on the road. Now right. I realize when everybody comes down here to retire, it's just so laid back and it's so yeah. wide open and the traffic is a joke compared to Cali. It's like, it's laughable. So yeah. And, and yeah. you don't get tickets. You can park anywhere you want, anytime you want. And it's like, you know, you get a, you get a half hour for a quarter 
or at least 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a different a different animal, totally. It was a big shock for me coming out there, and it's like I, I can barely, you know, coming out starving actor, no work, and then every little bit of money that I had saved up was going to tickets left and right. It was like he was. I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. But so far, we're faring well. Are you still a starving actor? Or are you not so starving? Oh, I'm, I'm uh, I'm still starving. I'm making I'm finding my way. Things are coming. You know, it's it doesn't happen overnight, but it can. I got into a couple good projects, so you know, it's it's little things that are leading to the bigger things. You know what I found? I have a I worked with Brett Michaels years ago. He was a friend of mine, and I remember he told me something that stuck with me for a really long time. And as stupid as it sounds, I'm sure you probably heard it before, but I had never heard it. Or maybe I just never really listened. But you know. When you're in this industry and you choose whatever format it is in this industry of arts, you know, it's going to be tough. And he said to me, if you stand in line long enough, you make it to the front. And yep, exactly. it's kind of that way in a lot of ways in the music business. And, you know, and even entertainment to be successful and you don't have to be 22 anymore, you know? Yeah. Well, in the music, it, you know, music business, because I'm a, I'm a rock drummer. I've, I've played for years and um, I was on Atlantic for a while. And, um, I used to play with Marilyn Manson's bass player, <clears throat> Twiggy. We were we used to right. practice in my mom's garage when we were in high school. And oh, the wow. thing about that, it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm like name dropping, horrible. But no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> it, 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 in the band, you don't want to hear about the unknowns, man. We know. That's I know. We, we don't care about. We don't care about that. These uh, in the band, you got to deal with four other people, four other personalities, schedules, egos, all that kind of stuff. Acting is more just kind of all you. You know what I mean? You got You only have yourself to depend on, and you can't blame anybody but yourself when things aren't going. You know, I mean, you could do everything you you could that you can muster up and your skills and everything else to get in the audition and do the best you can. But then there's so much more that that has to do with it. You know, for getting the part. But the band, it's, yeah. it's a little bit deeper. You know, in rehearsals. Yeah, I work a lot alone gear. because of that very reason. Because the more people you depend on, the harder it is to to do anything. And just when you're a one man operation and you're working about yourself, and mind you, you are your own your manager and publicist and PR person and all that. But you know, if something gets done, it's because of you. If nothing gets done, it's because of you. It's kind of like that's the thing that keeps me going. I mean, I'm a you know a working musician, and I do. You know, Pam and I were talking to her, and she's like, what do you do? I'm like, I do anything that pays, that's not illegal and not immoral. Yeah. <laughs> right. And hopefully looks good on a yep. resume. But there's not, you yep. have to right. be willing. It's a daily hustle, especially in this town, because there's a million starving people behind you. And, you you know, I've lived here my whole life, and I have watched so many people go home with their tail between their legs in every facet of this business, because it'll beat you down. That You, you think it's one thing, and your dreams say this, and then you get there, and you're like, it's overwhelming. Reality, what am I, reality yeah. says another what am I yeah, doing not, wrong? 90, How do I get it? It's, it's hard. Ninety percent of the people I came out with are all gone already. Oh, really? Yeah, the, you know, we came up with an acting troupe. We did our showcase in Burbank over there at the Oakwood. <clears throat> oh. There was a legendary party place at one time, and still yeah. kind of is. Every time I go there, it's, it's going crazy. And uh, yeah, the, the majority of them, they just they just couldn't hack it. You know, I've been blessed with a trade and. I've just been finding my way. I do a little, you know, air conditioning work on the side or I'm, you know, very handy electrical that can do just about anything. And, you know, I jumped in, I'm still doing PA work, but I'll jump in with the grips, the electrics, the art department. And, you know, you bust up rank a little bit and make a little more money, but I always stay, I don't want to commit too much because I'm trying to stay flexible for auditioning and stuff. So it's a real yeah. hard to balance everything, you know, to, but, balance uh, it, to pursue your art, to balance it and pursue your art, you know, to make it, it all is, work, yeah. they'll be able to pursue your art. But another uh, another great side of it is, you know, you really wor- learn the work ethic because sometimes you're on set 18 hours, 22 hours on some of these commercials, you're lugging gear. But, you know, you want to run a restaurant, you got to start washing the dishes, you know what I mean? And right. you start from the bottom, you learn every facet of the business. Now you, you develop that work ethic and what really goes into it and what is actually happening on set. But you, you get comfortable on set. You get comfortable being around the crew. And you get comfortable seeing all the people and, and the cameras and right. working with it and see how it all how it all actually goes down. Where a lot of my actor friends, they're not on set. They just they're auditioning, but they don't you know they don't know what it is. Once they get on set, it's a it's like a shock for them. So I get to be you know acclimated to that type of stuff, and you know I count that as a blessing. And as, as well as the the ethic and just the uh, the effort that goes into it. 
two minutes literally from everybody and you know how you really got to have your act together once you get there so you're not wasting everybody's time because it's it's yep. every second is is money yep yep and you know hopefully finding some balance between happiness and staying afloat <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it, it's a I'm jungle. Blessed. It I definitely mean, is. I feel very blessed to do what I love to do. That's all I. I only do music, and it can be a long time to get to that point. And uh, people often remind me that I'm a success story, only in the sense that I get to love, I get to do what I love to do in a day and age when it's really hard just to even get a job when you're more more than qualified. You know, and it's and that's what makes me appreciate and work that much harder because I could not have this. If I didn't, you know, if I didn't appreciate it and didn't hunger for it, you know, and that's, and that's kind of like when I was saying, like you stick around in the game long enough. I have a few friends, one or two might call tonight, but I played in, I saw them around town for years, phenomenal talents, and never really got their break. And in the last three or four years, got great breaks with big artists and are, you know, like a buddy of mine, Glenn Sobel, he might call. He's with Alice Cooper, and he's yeah. been I think, with Alice like four or five years, and. Glenn is hands down one of the best drummers I've ever heard in my life, and I've heard a lot of drummers. And I see him around town doing, you know, the same kind of gigs I'm doing for a little money, just playing. And then you stick around long enough, and you know, people know you. Your word gets around. You get a good rep. And I have a few. I have quite a few friends that's happened to over their mid 40s. So it kind of gives me a little hope, you know. Yeah. A little. Yeah. Hope. I- you ever go? You ever you ever gig at Lucy? Is it Lucy's Fifty One in, in uh, Burbank? Yeah, they closed it down last year. Did, did they? Yeah, they closed it down after ten years. Yep. Lucy's Fifty One. I I, I I I thought it was there. I don't know, not that long ago, like eight months ago. Yeah, they closed it last April. Last April they closed it. It's funny you mentioned that place because that's a place where, like, a lot of musicians, you know, in the kind of my generation, are like. It was becoming a cool little hang because there are less and less places in Los Angeles. And this may seem like a shock to people in the Midwest or in the East Coast, maybe more so the Midwest, but like people just don't go out in L.A. to hear live music. Yeah. Unless it's a tribute band, unless it's a big artist playing in a big show, or unless you're super – it's just not – it's not how it used to be, you know. Mm. And it's tough. And like Lucy's was a great play, been around for 10 years, and they were – you know, a buddy of mine, Chuck Wright, was hosting a jam once a week with Gilby Clark with all these different – and people were, like, starting to migrate there more. It's like, oh, cool, we got another spot now. Gone. You know. I saw some great really. talent in that place. It was, a, it was a great little vibe in that place. You yeah, know? yeah. Amazing and, place. You some guys, yeah. It, it, you know, another thing is different from East Coast, West Coast is everything closes at 2 o'clock out west, where here you could go all night long. And that was kind of a – what do you mean you're – like, last calls at – quarter to two and it's like we're just getting warmed up out here yeah that that's kind of strange you know being new but. yeah i love i love chicago and everywhere east of that because of that <laughs> that's what i love i remember going to chicago and playing and like what we're starting at one o'clock in the morning till three <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep. that's what it was i was like that's seriously yep. that's what it was like your start time was one yep. and then there was the after bars <laughs> it's five o'clock in the morning yeah oh, no we're done with that bar now we're going for drink. i'm like oh my god that's oh, yeah. in l.a yeah not stop. There might be a few so, underground clubs like that, but not like Chicago or New York or anything like that. I remember being younger and we like, you know, you, you have to load up all your gear in my van. We drive all the way down to South Beach and we like play Cameo or Washington Square or something like that. And we would, we're like, well, so what time are we on? Oh, you guys are going on at 2.30. 2.30? They'd have like a marathon with like 15 bands and gear everywhere and everyone on top and the alleys backed up and just living nightmare. But, you know. That, <laughs> but nobody cared, was, uh, man. It was great. You know, no, it was great. awesome, yeah. It, then you go to the kitchen club after and drink nickel beer till six in the morning. <laughs> nickel beer. Day. You're showing your age, man. You're showing all our ages. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've ever had a nickel beer. I don't know if I've ever had a nickel beer. I've had a dollar beer, but I don't know if I've ever had a nickel beer. It's the same beer. <laughs> it just only costs a nickel. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for clearing that That's up. That's how it me. works. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> those days. <laughs> Do they have nickel beer nights anywhere out in Cali? A nickel for beer? A n- yeah, a nickel no beer. way. I mean, no. you get it in a cup. It's not usually a bottle. So, well, they used to have bottles down our kitchen club. Yeah, it was a, it was a bottle for a nickel. Or they gave a cup. It was a small cup, but. How's uh, the weather out there now? Up. What's that? How's the weather out there now? It's great. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little, it's, I, you know I, I hesitate to say a little cool because I don't want to get, you know, I don't want Pam to reach through the phone and pull my hair out. Yeah, uh, but it's it's I don't know, low sixties, high fifties. 
<laughs> about, about with the same with a slight cool breeze. You know? Same as same as status quo. Yeah. It rained yesterday very hard. If that makes you feel any better, Pam, it rained very hard yesterday. Yeah. When I, I don't first, think so. But we woke up to blue skies and sun. <laughs> it was like torrential when I first moved there. The the river was filled up all the way, it was flooding in the streets. I'm like, Why well, I've never seen so much rain and then after that nothing. I never heard a lightning strike, thunder, nothing. For years. I mean, how much do people, Pam? For instance, let me ask you this: Like, okay, you're you're in Chicago, so you watch local news. How much do you keep up on, like, aware of, like, because there's so many things in California, not just you know, it's the weather, the 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 brush fires, the landslides, the you know, there's a lot of stuff we we have here that the rest of the country probably doesn't care about half the time. I'm assuming, or you don't know about. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that that's the only time we hear anything about any other states, if there's something major going on, you know. Like an um, right? It's, you know, it's local weather, it's local news mostly that you listen to. So I uh, keep up with all the other stuff on, you know, on social media. Thank God right. for social media. Yeah. But then again, after all this talk about all this warm weather and rubbing it in, I unfriend you now. So there, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the weather's still going to stay the same. My the first earthquake freaked me out. The earthquake yeah. freaked me out. My first earthquake tripped me out when I was out there. To just feel the wall, see the wall buckle and the floor move. I thought I was like dehydrated and was, you know, needed food or something. And my roommates ran out. They, yeah. Did you feel that? Like, oh, was that what I thought? And I ran out of the building. I was terrified. As they freaked me out. I'm like, I'll get buried in this building. Get me out of here. Well, for people that live in the, in the Midwest or anywhere on the East Coast, you know, I guess that freaks them out. I grew up with them, so I don't think – like, I think of a tornado – or a, or, and like that freaks me out. Oh, they're brutal. Yeah, but but yeah, people from you, the East Coast have never felt an earthquake come here. Yeah, and it was definitely yeah, uh, it was nuts for me. But I've been through every hurricane since what a man since uh, dating myself seventy one. So oh wow, it's a, it's a neighborhood you just go down trees down you can't get anywhere. Stop signs are upset. People's yards are just totally ripped up sideways, perpendicular to the ground, with the mailboxes parallel to the ground and trees everywhere. And houses just destroyed, gone like an atom bomb went off, and stuff everywhere. It's it's a it's pretty it's a big shell shock. No thanks. No thanks. No thanks. Too many earthquakes. Well, thanks for calling in, man. It was great well, meeting you. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks, George. Thank you, George. You, All the best to you. Hey, thank you. You uh, stay, stay, stay warm up here the best <laughs> you can. And um, yeah, I'll be in touch, Mike. I'm still looking for this camera, so I'll be talking about that a little bit. Yeah, we got to hook up next time I'm out, dude. Okay. Yeah, you got my number. You got it, brother. I'll see you soon. You guys have a great evening. Take care, man. You good too, night. buddy. You All right. too. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. I still haven't got to meet wow. you yet. He's he's uh. So we were going to hang out last time, and I was I was really busy doing shoots and stuff, and we didn't get to to hang. And then he's not going to be out. He's not going to be there at this time. So maybe next time, hopefully. You know. Hey, you know what? You have friends all over the place. Sometimes you're lucky if you see them once every two, three years. Most of my good friends are Midwest, East Coast, so I talk to them far more than I see them. Yeah, and that's the way it is with me. Most of mine are you know up north or either in Jersey or or uh, or Pennsylvania or. Uh, you know, in, in California. So I, you know, get to see you guys when I, when I fly out and, and that's the deal. So yeah. what are you going to well, do? Well, we have another one of your friends online now that just called in. So here we go. Okay. okay. And this time, this time I know who's calling. It's Christine oh, that's from good. LA. <laughs> Hi, Christine. <laughs> Christine. Can you hear us? I'm waiting for the thing to go. It's, it's not connecting there. Oh, come on. Why is it not connecting? Can you hear me? Christine, hold on. Oh, there's I Christine. hear you now. You there you we go. So can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear yeah. me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, Christine. Hello. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am good. It's great to hear your Hi, voice. Hi, Christine. It's great to hear Hi. your voice. Thanks for calling in. This is Mark. Hi, this is Mark. Cool. Hi, Mark. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'm Pam. Thanks for having me on. And <laughs> Pam, it's great to meet you, too. Thank you so much. Thank the game's you. all you know, Mr. Strider. I'm excited about this. 
How do you know Mr. Strider? <laughs> um, Michael and I, we have mutual friend. Yeah. You, you know, a mutual friend, Kathleen Kinmont, out here in, in Southern California. Um, I, Michael, how long have you known Kathleen? I mean, Keeney, I've known uh, I'm turning 50. We're both turning 50, so um, I don't even know. We were 15 um, when we met. Oh, wow. 35 been, years. Um, yeah, so I haven't, um, I haven't, obviously haven't known her that long. I first met her I think in 2003 when I was in LA with some of my again serial killer friends that were having a uh, they were having a, a Halloween love saying that you know the the movie yeah. Halloween they were having a convention and uh, a couple of a few of my buddies had played Michael Myers at that time so I went out there with them and hung out for the weekend and she was there and I remember when um uh, when I first saw her, I, was, I asked one of my buddies, Brad, I said, hey, is that Kathleen, uh-huh. the girl from Renegade? And he said, yeah. I'm like, right. oh, my God, dude, she's very beautiful. Are you I said, why don't you, uh, why don't you introduce me? He's like, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm going to introduce you <laughs> over there. So, she is stunning. She's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And so I love her, making yeah. uh fun of her from that Halloween, watching her get impaled. It was great. Oh, she got stabbed with a shotgun. You know, that's one yeah, of the few times. Yeah, she got impaled. That, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the few times that that character, Michael Myers, actually killed someone with something other than a butcher, than a butcher knife. And uh, Is that right? Yes. it's As a matter of fact, up until Knucklehead Rob Zombie took over, I think it was the only time that he killed somebody with um uh, with anything other than a butcher knife, and he he stabbed wow. her. Wow! So that could be a trivia question. Well, there you go. He he stuck her to yeah, the wall the, with the shotgun. That's right. So Kathleen <laughs> and, uh, could become a trivia question. Yeah, no, she. I haven't talked to her in a little while, but you know, I'll, um, I'm going doing, out in a few she's weeks. Doing so. yeah, she's no, doing she great. Yeah, she's doing great. So, um, Michael, amazing. have you had a chance to talk about your project? Yeah, I did and talk about it. I am it calling bit. in. Yeah, I did talk about it in the beginning, and um, <clears throat> I'm coming out in a few weeks to continue work on it. It's a, it's going to take a couple of years to to actually do all the photography for the shoot. Um, mm-hmm. But you want to tell how we? Um, yeah, first well, met Michael. Well, Michael's project, for those of you just listening, I guess you didn't hear, he's putting together a book, um, like a coffee table book for to, um, suicide awareness, and all the proceeds are going to go to the um, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, right. which is just extraordinary. And right. it's, it, it, Michael, this idea you have, it's so inspiring and so brave it's so gutsy because to have like a suicide coffee table book <laughs> is pretty yeah, bold uh, for a topic that is so taboo. Right, right. But it's something that can't be ignored and shouldn't be ignored. So it's almost like you have to no. put people people's face, you know, in a, in a it is, it is coffee best, table-ish kind of way. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree more, but um, it's it's still very, it's still a gutsy, bold move. And I am a advocate for this. I am a suicide survivor myself, meaning that I have lost someone to suicide, which was my father. Um, right. And back in 1980, he was an actor by the name of Don Redberry, who was famous for, like, the Red Rider serials back um, in the 1940s. Um, with the Red Rider BB gun, he was he was the originator for that character. And went right. on and did hundreds of film and television and stage. And he also suffered from mental illness most of his life. And we lost him to suicide in 1980. And, you know, if we think nobody's talking about it now, nobody was talking about it yeah, back in 1980. Right, right. So I do everything I can to help not only us, who have been affected by the loss of someone we love to suicide, but to just start talking about it for Christ's yeah. sake, you know, like let's 
let's not make this such a stigmatized thing. When we have 800,000 people dying in the world every single year to suicide, and those are just the reported suicides, you know, we got to talk about it. It's a huge, huge issue. And, um, you know, I think that it was the last time that we talked, it was before Robin Williams actually committed suicide. And that, Mm -hmm. I think that kind of woke everyone up to like, wow, (laughs) this is very real and uh, and terrible. And um, mm-hmm. you know what, a lot of people I, know, I found you really hard, Michael. Yeah. yeah. What were you saying, Mark? You know what I found? A lot of people said after that, which really bothered me because you know you start to put the value on. Oh well, that was Robin Williams. Well, it's like well, there's half of how many people a year that are nobodies that it happens to, and then a lot of mm-hmm. people would make commentary about you know. Like uh, using him in a way and saying, well, you know, what a coward he was because he had everything. And, oh, and my people, gosh, yeah. It's really not about what you have and what you don't have, you know. Right. It has nothing That's to do not with true that. I remember hearing right. so many awful things said like that. Oh, yeah. it has mm-hmm. absolutely nothing to do with it. I, I It made my skin crawl when people were, were yeah. calling him a coward or make those uh, comments. Yeah. Like, this is, you know, he had all the money in the world. Why would he do something like this? It's like, what does something like this mean? Right. You know, it, right. all the money and in the world. And who are you to say if something like this is nothing to you, it may be something to somebody else. Exactly, and it was clearly something very, very personal and very devastating to him and, his, yeah. you know, his family. All the <clears throat> money in the world, all the fame in the world, none of that has anything to do with what's happening in our mind. If no. Robin mm-hmm. Williams died of a cancer that could be more physically seen, you know, they would have thought, oh, what a long, hard fight Robin Williams did and right. how brave he right. was. Right. And now, sadly, we lost him. Nobody sees the fight Robin Williams had with his own mental illness for years. Right. So, therefore, right. he's just a coward. Yeah, you know, like one day, a, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to do this and be a coward. That's an ignorant Well, I remember when Michael asked me, when Michael asked me about the book and started telling me about it, and, you know, he knew, you know, I'm not a rock star, but he knows I have some friends in the field that, you know, have some mm-hmm. names, and, and I was You're my own way. You're a rock star to me, anyway. Well, in are. my own eyes, and to my family, I am. <laughs> it goes, doesn't go much. Maybe a few scattered yeah, fans around the world. You are in more than half the rock stars I've ever shot. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, the, the the idea is like, I... You know, I, I remember thinking like, I don't. I've never personally experienced anyone really, really close to. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'd lost, I'd lost two friends in the last six months. First ever suicide. Both suicide. Oh my god! Both musicians. Yeah, both musicians. This in the both last under six 50. months. Yes, in wow. the last, they were back. They were within a couple of weeks of each other, and I'd never experienced that. Oh. And it really had an effect on me. Maybe because it was the first time I had ever been. So it was somebody I'd known. Two guys I'd known for a long time, but not super well. But we knew each other. twenty years. You know, it was one of those kind of right. things, and, mm-hmm. and it just, right. it makes you think about everything from your mortality to how big are my problems really, and what drives you know all that kind of stuff. And so, I'm you know I'm I'm trying to think you know if, if I can get any of my friends that are listening that don't want to call in like that would would be willing to do that and take photograph for anything for this great you know that's just going to draw more attention to it because oh it the will, cause people, is. Know, it, it, it's so true. I mean, what the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline does, you know, where the money would be going to for Michael's book is, right. you know, it keeps this national 24-7 line going. It keeps their website up and running, again, worldwide. Um, it goes into helping our veterans, into helping our youth, into helping our LGBTQ youth. Um, it gives people templates for safety plans if they're feeling like they're in crisis themselves. It helps right. the families who have, you know, members that are suffering with mental health, what they can do, how can I help, what do those warning signs look like, and then how do right. I respond to those warning signs. Awareness. All of that education. And, yeah. and then, of course, to to what does it mean to survive something like this? to have right. just a regular grief process, which is so challenging in, in a culture that doesn't like to grieve, period. 
And then right. you add stigma, shame, taboo on top of all of that. Um, you know, how how do we get through that process with, you know, our dignity intact so we don't go down the dark highway like I did for right. many, 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 many years. So and that's just to name a few of the things that the National Lifeline does. And what Can I ask you a personal question just because I'm see. curious? I mean, of you went course. through something like this and it was somebody so close to I mean, like – you know, I grew up in a really strict, disciplined Latino family. It was hitting. Hitting was just part of the mo. It was. It was the seventies. It was just that's what it was, and it wasn't like it is now. And there was a part of me growing up thinking that I was going to be like that. You know, and but thinking you were that be like what? Kind of, well, just maybe just the kind of a physical abusive father or something like that, or just that oh, kind okay. of. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, so okay. growing so when when that happened with you, did you did you feel like it was something that, you know. At, like, I don't know, maybe like this is going to get like that puts it in your head. I got the suicide gene. Um, well, that's not absolutely. Definitely. You know what? It, uh, no, no, okay. no. It's a great question, and 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 the answer is yes. Um, especially since I was so young, I was you know I was just fifteen. So right. you yeah. wonder, like, okay, this has been this has been shown, this is my example, so when the going gets tough, is this my way out? Um, right. And, and you fear that, you know, and it wasn't until I started to really understand that for, I, I, there is something different about my father and I. He suffered from a pretty significant mental illness, um, and I do not. You, you were know, able to separate I do suffer, that. I, 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 once I learned, then I was. But right. um, it could get it would get scary at times for sure, you know. And and they there's some statistic about ninety percent of all suicides have a mental health component attached to it, whether it's like oh. underdiagnosed or not properly diagnosed or or not being treated well. I think it's a little less than that personally, because deep, right. deep, deep, deep despair can also cause suicidal thoughts and suicide ideation. Um, and there's, you know, addictions and alcohol and drugs and impulsivity and 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 access to firearms and pills and I mean, there's so many factors that that can right. lead into it. Um, right. But 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 once I started to kind of own my myself and my person and know that there was help and know that if I ever thought those ways, which I have um, more than once, there's a place that I could go to help and kind of put a, a wrench in the wheel, so to speak, so right. it doesn't get so out of control. That's um, great. Well, that's but, the hope. I mean, that's but the hope right there. Absolutely. And we just need, just like diabetes runs in families, we have to pay attention to ourselves and take good care of ourselves. And if mental health runs in our families, let's pay attention. You know, yeah. can I can I be, you know, a... Uh, um, at risk for depression, can I be at risk right. for bipolar? You know, it it shouldn't be it shouldn't be quiet. You should talk about it quite loudly. You know, right. I have a I have a Facebook page. Um, Michael's checked it out before. It's called Gonzo Grieving, and I stole Gonzo from Hunter S. Thompson, who we also lost to suicide. Uh, yeah. um, coming up on ten years, um, so that we can approach this unedited the way that. Hunter approached everything in his life. Oh yeah, was that's unedited. Sure. That's an understatement. And and it's so <laughs> powerful to accurately discuss these experiences unedited. We can't do it if we have fear. It, it no, just doesn't true. work. Right. right. I wish right. I could do Which something more. Again, just give you some names, the rock stars. Oh, there's I mean, always more you can do. Yeah. There's, well, I know, but like within within like the. Do. The powers that I have, like, you know, it's like when you have something like you can help somebody out with because you have this one angle, it's like, you know, I mean, I said, yeah, we could do a show, I suppose, Michael, you know, it'd be fun. We could do a music show and have people sit in and, you know, right. I don't know, you know, there's, I guess, there's, like you said, there's always ideas, right? There's always, there's always ideas, there's always more to help. We have walks, we have um, all kinds of ways to raise money, but, um, What's so great about, you know, just getting back to the book a second, Michael, because I'm so excited about it, is just that <laughs> it is going to be putting these faces 
in front of everybody and sticking them right, right on their coffee tables. And, and you know, where so many people have always thought this is not a topic for polite conversation. We don't mention right. suicide, and, you know, and we just don't do it. And to just well, throw it in their faces in that artistic, creative, beautiful way that you're going to do, Michael, is, you know, just, just bravo. Just, right on. just actually talking to somebody about it, I think, uh, is a good thing. I mean, you don't have to have a big, crazy event or anything. Of course, some point, that's great. You can raise more mm-hmm. awareness. But, I mean, just talking awareness. to somebody about it. Talking. Is, uh, talking about it. It's, yeah, yeah, something that, you know, if I had ever... I never talked to my friend about it. I had no idea whatsoever until I got a call one day when I was having dinner. And, uh, you know, at that point it was too late. And, you know, there's nothing mm-hmm. we can do about it at that point. But, mm-hmm. I mean, there's... How would you ever even do that? It's like, how would you... You wouldn't want somebody who wasn't thinking like that. You wouldn't want to put it in their head. I mean, how would you discuss it with that? You felt like somebody was, you know... I guess that's where you look for help, you know? Mark? Well, this... Mark, let me let me. Can I interrupt you right there? Because sure. when somebody when somebody gets to the point where they are actually considering suicide, it has been on their minds for a very, very, very yeah. long time. You could yeah. never put the idea in someone's head. If you yeah, brought he it up, like, "Hey, man, are you thinking about killing yourself?" It, it, what it actually does is it deflates the balloon. They go, wow, yeah, I have they're been. On to, they're on to me. They don't. They don't go. Oh my God! Thank you so much for that idea. I didn't think of that before. Yeah. They've uh, been right. thinking about it forever. So you right, know that's right. the fear. We're we're worried. We're going to throw it in the in you know in there, and it's already there. Right. Well, the thing so about it's the book okay is... to ask and to ask a plan and all of that stuff. I, the one thing that I'm. Um that I'm focusing on with the book and I, uh, the, the director of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is, his name is Dr. Draper. And we've yeah. gone into great detail about, you know, the idea, the, uh, the way that I want the book to come across or the way that we want it to come across, which he, he has, you know, I'm uh, taking a lot of advice from him is that it's, it's a book of, life and survival and happiness and uh, it's not a book about suicide it's a book about living and uh and happiness mm-hmm. and there's a lot of mm-hmm. a whole lot of things that I want to that I want people to feel when they see it i mean it just goes across the board whether it's uh you know happiness it's uh there are parts of it that are that are uh you know it's crazy, sexy, cool. Basically, it's. I, I well, want people good. to think. Is there going to yeah, be any people... forward or anything like that? Are you putting any kind of? I mean, is it, yeah, I'll like, probably have anything? something in it. I just don't know who I would have to uh, to write the forward at this point. I've still got probably. This is a very very long process, and I've probably got a couple of years left to do it. You know, to work on it. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 uh, it's not a quick process. Especially since I don't but that's live. what's cool. That shows the passion in what you're doing is that this isn't about you trying right. to cash in on anything. It's just like in order to do this right, because Michael and I have talked about this quite a few times, in order to do it right and really be profound and make, you know, you're going to have right. to involve people that people will want. I mean, it's it's kind of sad that we have to use the celebrityism in a certain way, but it's for right. something positive and it's for awareness and education, you know, and, right. and all that stuff. Like it you is, said. And, and that's okay. And I think that's okay. I mean, I know my, my dad would have been honored, you know. I, I mean, he's been gone 35 years now, and it's what what can I do to help, you know. He's just, right. I know he's feeling that way, and if he's using me to help, then I, I'll do it. Right, you know, and and it is it is life affirming, and it is hope filled when we plug in and actively participate in our life. I mean, what is what is more hopeful than that? Well, Doing it, not, you know. Yeah. Mark, yeah. you were sitting here talking about you know the celebrities involved. It is, I mean, it is kind of unfortunate that we, you know, that's one of the first things that I thought about was that if I want people to buy this book, I'm going to have to put you know, celebrities in it. So it's it is based uh on celebrities.
celebrities, but it's not all celebrities. Probably ninety percent, I would say. So mm-hmm. you know, it just is what it is. People, if people are going to buy it, they want to see people that they know, they recognize, that are that are uh, you know fun to well, look Hopefully, at. they believe that this person did and understand why they did it because they realized that it was you know. It, right. Well, just the way things are, I guess. You know, you get people interested. Oh, look, and so and so's an advocate of this. Wow, that's really cool. I really admire that person. Let me be an advocate for that. Now, you know, that's yeah, what you you're exactly right. It has that snowball effect, and it's like if they're talking about it, then maybe I can talk about it. Yes, yeah, so yeah. you know, and I don't have power. to be ashamed. Right. They do. They have a lot you know of power what would be nice. You know what would be nice, Michael, is if maybe you can get some of the actors or somebody that's our teens and get them in there so that way kids become more aware of it because too much of that's happening these days with so many suicides by children and mainly because of bullying. But uh, I think that would be great if you could do something like that too. That's a good point too, Pam, because it is the second leading cause of death in our youth right now is suicide. Right, right. The second... It's funny that you and mentioned that. Anything Pam. else killing our kids that, at that rate, it'd be front page news every day. Exactly. We're actually, one of my friends is actually um, is is shooting for the book, and uh, she's an actress. She's a she's in a lot of horror movies, but she's an actress, so she's in different kinds of movies. Um, her name is Daniel Harris, and she was very good friends with. If you remember, do you remember the uh, the child actor Jonathan Brandis that killed himself at home? Oh yes, yeah. 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 So she, yeah. yeah, she was very good friends with Jonathan. So she's doing a shoot uh, for Jonathan. So uh, that's oh, wow. that's so nice. Yeah, yeah. she's a wonderful girl. And, yeah, uh, that's that's wonderful. We haven't got to shoot yet, but we're gonna shoot. I don't know if we're gonna shoot this yeah. time or the next time that I'm out. But, um, well, it would be great for anybody who listens to this broadcast now or later, if somebody in their own little way, you know. Uh, reaches out to you and says, hey, yeah, you know, I don't know a lot of people, but I know this one person that would probably be, you know what I mean? I'm saying like that we're using this forum as right, a way right. to, mm-hmm. even if it's one person we get out there that calls you or emails you directly and says, hey, I want to help because I know somebody who would, you know, that's great. I hope that, hope people have your information and all that stuff so that if someone's so inclined to find out that they can. Right. Well, I hope so too. I mean, is there a way, um, Michael, through the radio show that people con- can contact you? Oh yeah, you can. Uh, Excellent. Obviously, you can contact me through my website, striderimage.com, um, or you can uh, contact me through email at striderimage at gmail dot com. And then, uh, aside from my website, I've got, you know, how many Facebook accounts do I have? <laughs> I've got, <laughs> I think the main on which one day is, your uh, what your personality is that day, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's the main um, one is, if anybody Facebook. is listening and wants to contact me, they can go directly to my Facebook page. I just have one. Um it's not like Michael, but it's Gonzo uh Gonzo Grieving on Facebook. Gonzo and Grieving. leave me and leave me a message there. And um you know, 'cause I'm I am a thousand percent behind Michael in this book, and I have people that I'm contacting to help and um, whatever I can do. And if there's anything at all, please. I really well, I just like I just liked your page. Is that picture you and your dad? That is. That's an awesome picture. Thank you, if you so go much. To that that was... evening, it's a, oh, what an awesome picture. Thank you. Is that, that picture? Is, um, How old are you, like 13 there or something? I was 14 years old in that photo, and it's the last picture of my father and I together. Oh, it was God. shot by a, oh. a fan at an event we were at. My father was signing autographs or doing, you know, Yeah, he's got the and, kerchief on and the hat and the, and the, and yes. the holster and everything. <laughs> oh, what a great That's shot. Him. Thank you Very so cool. much. Yeah, Thank you that so is much. a great picture. Well, wow, I just want to like this too, and I, and I I want to let the listeners know it's spelled G O N Z O, Gonzo grieving. Uh, it's very easy. Yeah. It came up right away for me. So, yes, thank here. you. Same here. Thank you You're so welcome. much. Well, thank you, Michael. This has been fantastic. Well, thanks for calling, and I appreciate your support, and you know all the kind words, and 
when I come out in a few weeks, hopefully we can uh, we can do a shoot for the well, book. That'll be great. <laughs> anytime, well, anytime. Let me know. This is wonderful. You. Thank you. It was so great to meet you, Mark. Thank you so much. Yeah, you too. Cam. Hopefully, I'll Thank see you, you so town. much. It would be wonderful. You're welcome. It would be wonderful. I'll, I'll introduce myself. <laughs> All right, you guys take care. Thank you. Too, now. Okay, I'll talk to you soon, Christine. All right, talk to you soon, Michael. Thank you. Love okay. you, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Well, that was an awesome call. So that was a very yeah. awesome call. Yeah. I got me pumped about it. I mean, wow. something about the personal experience there really just, like we could be talking about anybody, and somebody calls in and says, this happened to my dad, and it just becomes intensely more profound, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. It's incredible. It's it really is and it's um you know, it's hard to understand some of the you know, some of the stuff that some people are going through with uh with losing someone like that. And I guess there's really no way to understand it unless you actually experience it. But uh I'm gonna she's gonna be shooting for the book. We talked about it before I guess about six months ago when we first talked. So when I go out, hopefully we're going to be able to shoot for it. It didn't, you know, it didn't really trigger me when I said to her, you know, I've never gone through it. And I was like, wait a second, this just happened to me with two two guys that I know. And um, did, I remember, did they know each other or no? <laughs> no, no, completely unrelated. One was um, one was in Hawaii. He did it in Hawaii on a, a very private beach. I still don't. I didn't inquire too much as to what happened, but he posted something on his Facebook page on a Monday, and it was a good sense, and then he disappeared, and I found out Thursday night that they had found him on a very remote beach in Oahu. He lived in Oahu, and he, um, and uh, you know, one of those local beaches that only so-and-so know about, apparently once you get off the main road, it's like, Ten miles off a road, like a, right. he was, he knew what he was doing. It was very anticipated, and I hadn't seen him in a few years. And he had struggled with stuff in the past. But I remember the profound fall. Like he was an LA musician, he'd moved back to Hawaii. But they had a they had a benefit show for him. I was out of town, I couldn't play at it. But all these people came together. People I knew through knew didn't know. You know, like all these people were suddenly tied together. And then um, two weeks later, a buddy of mine, we were emailing Facebook on a Wednesday night, and the next morning he was is gone. And I don't, I, again, that, I, I, I'm 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 just making an opinion about that because I don't know, but I, I believe that there was, you know, there I don't know, there's two kinds of suicide sometimes. I think it's like accidental, not so accidental suicide, and then really conscious suicide. You right. Because I, I think this a person had, a you know, an addiction problem and, and uh, may have not intended 100% for it to happen, but may have not not intended 100%. Does that make any sense, you know? Yeah, yeah no, if they were in the moment, you know, if they were, you know, if they were high or something and they were in the moment and thought about it and then it happened, but if they had maybe come down off their high, they would have thought, well, geez, what did I almost do? Right. You know, I that mean, kind of thing. Whitney Houston so. thing. Like, the Whit- there's the whole mm-hmm. Whitney Houston thing. I was I was playing at a club, local club down here two weeks ago, and Bobby Brown's a local around here, so he apparently he goes, I never knew he was in there, but Bobby Brown is Whitney's ex, obviously. Oh, and um, yeah, works, and yeah. I thought, you know, and the first thing somebody said to me, as, cr- as crass as it is, they said to me, yeah, they, yeah, the wrong one went, or the wrong one died. You know, here's this guy who just didn't oh, do anything. And wow. then there's Whitney. And I, I was playing, I used to play regularly at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, the famous Pretty Woman Hotel, you know, um, yeah, on yeah. Wilshire, mm-hmm. on Wilshire, right, right in Rodeo Drive. And about six months before I stopped playing there, Whitney Houston used to come in. And... I'll say this not in any arrogant way, but she's, I mean, the woman was so gracious. She was so sweet and told me I had a phenomenal voice. And I'd like, that was my bucket list moment when Whitney Houston told me that. I was absolutely beside myself. And she came in a few times after. And the last time I saw her was six days before she died. It was on a Sunday night, five days before she died. It was on a Sunday night. And there she was. She looked amazing. She looked healthy. She looked great. And she was, I could hear her singing harmonies. I was playing all these old R&B songs. And there she was, like, sing. And then five days later, she was gone. I'm like, she didn't try to kill herself. She was fine. She got too high. That's my personal opinion. I think she just got too high and drowned. You know, so yeah, sometimes yeah. I think there's kind of, you know, like, you know yeah, if I kill myself, it? it's okay, but I don't really want it to seem like it was on purpose. I don't know. That's an incredible story.
story. I, you have never told me that story. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a, I love that one. I mean, I just like, it's one of those moments. It was just surreal. Like Whitney Tell the story came up about the uh, Kiefer. Oh, uh, well, it's not so fun. <laughs> a drunk Kiefer <laughs> Sutherland? No one's ever heard about a drunk Kiefer Sutherland. Now, we, I, yeah. I did a lot of the Beverly Hills hotels for a few years, and they're great gigs and all that. But, you know, celebrity ridden with, you know, every night I played. And one night Kiefer came in there with his brother and his brother's wife and or girlfriend and um, had a few drinks, and they felt like, you know, just having a good time and, and whatever. And he's a big music music buff. He actually has, I think he has his own custom signature model, Gibson Acoustic, and he's got his own record label. He's a big, big music guy, guitar player and stuff. And so... He started partying with us and drinking, and and he wanted to get up and play. So I said, okay. So it was me and my percussionist, and I said, do you want to play or do you want me to play? And as he's answering me stumblingly, I said, why, why don't I hold my $4,000 guitar and you sing? And uh, so he took the mic, and he said he wanted to play Knocking on Heaven's Door, the old Dylan song. And he started telling this really cool story about driving in Malibu with his dad, Donald Sutherland, and his brother went in the late 70s, and... He goes, my dad had two 8-track cassettes in the car. It was I can't remember what album the Dylan song was on, uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door was on, but he had that one. I can't remember the other one he mentioned, but he was so specific about these two 8-track cassettes that his dad constantly listened to. And so right. he started playing Knocking on Heaven's Door, which I thought was cool. It was a really neat kind of inside story about you know, music and you know, and how somebody was touched by it here so many years later. And Needless to say, we butchered the song because he couldn't remember the words. But it was fun. <laughs> And he doesn't remember anything, by the way. He was, I told him I was a solo artist. I gave him a copy of my record. He put it in his pants. He goes, I'll call you. I won't forget you. I never heard from him again. <laughs> never. Aww. And that is a very Hollywood story, and that's what happens all the time in this town. You know, if I had a nickel for every time someone's blown sunshine up my ass, you know, it's like, it's this town. It's a lot of talk, you know. Yeah, I think it's a great story. It's one of my favorite stories. Yeah, it's a and the story. picture is great. The picture is awesome. He, oh, I sent it to you, didn't I? It's a it's a yeah. very very blurry picture of Kiefer and I, but yeah. and I think because we're laughing and the person was taking the picture was probably laughing. But yeah, it was it's fun. I've had a little few really. I've been fortunate to be able to play in front of a lot of people that I admire, sort right. of by accident, being in the right place at the right time, and and it's you know it's cool. It's cool to get appreciation for what you do from anybody, but. Yes. When there's somebody in your art that you respect and says that to you, it definitely, I think, it, I mean, wouldn't you agree, Michael? You know? Yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, and to get a uh, to get a compliment from someone that, that you, you know, have always looked up to, it's, it's definitely amazing. And it's, uh, you know, words can't express. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, Michael, I mean, who it would you look- like to uh, take photographs of that you haven't yet? Um, wow. There's a lot of people. Is this people a dead or alive question have, or just anything? Well, there's a, there's a lot of people that I would have loved to have photographed that have, you know, that have moved on, that have, you know, died and aren't with us anymore. Um, I would say it would have to be out of, out of all of them, it would have to be Elvis, which was, I think, the greatest oh. entertainer that ever lived, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. um Jim Morrison uh would have been the second in line. So those two, you know, I would certainly be happy with, you know, photographing the two of those guys. That would be and Morrison was actually a huge, huge Elvis fan. He um uh, they say that he used to uh, he used to make everyone when an Elvis song would come on, he would make everyone in the room, you know, be quiet. So you could hear the song. He was he was a huge, huge Elvis fan, and I, you know, obviously he Elvis was my first um, he, uh, hero as an entertainer, and uh, I loved him and still do. And uh, but Morrison, you know, was a different kind of entertainer. I would, you know, I would have loved to have to have photographed him. You know, I photographed his best friend, which was his drama. What's that saying? They don't one. make them like that anymore. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. And they certainly don't. Not, Show know, me anybody who's come close to that persona of Morris yeah, in the last yeah. 40 years. Yeah, and, and you know what? Um, someone mentioned to me recently, as a matter of fact, Rudy Sarzo, a bass, yeah. really great bass player, um, told me one time, he said, you know, Michael, they, you know the concept behind 
American Idol. I said, no, what do you mean? He said, it's because the American Idol is considered Elvis, and they're trying to make another Elvis. I said, well, that... Really? See, we know that will never happen. But that idea huh. for that was based on Elvis Presley. Right. You know, but that, oh, that wow. was obviously will never happen. Um, I think the American Idol thing is pretty much dead at this point anyway. But uh, you that's think where it that, all came like, from. I mean, you shot, you shot, I mean, I've seen Michael's, you know, personal portfolio and the stuff he puts up online. And, and like, do you kind of get that feeling like, and you can be honest here, I don't I don't really care, like, from a musician's point of view. Like, when you get to a certain point and you shoot, you know, you shoot enough rock stars, do they all kind of seem like the same, like, yeah, I'm just shooting another rock star kind of thing? Or do you get excited about shooting certain people? No, I get excited, depending on who it is. I mean, I get excited about um, most of them. I... Uh, you know, like I told you earlier, there's a lot of them that just couldn't be a rock star if they, if somebody, <laughs> if somebody I was going to say if somebody paid them, but somebody does pay them. You know, they don't know how to be a rock star. And there are others that, you know, are natural in front of the camera. Kiss is the best that I've seen yet. Um, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley were made for cameras. Um, you know, somebody like, I mean, I've seen a few over the years that were just like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, I shot the Zach Brown, the Zach Brown band. I mean, you know, they, they just stand there. It's like the Grateful Dead or something. They they just don't move. And um, You're saying people you who know, stand I, still don't do it for you as a photographer. I, it doesn't, it doesn't I uh, entertain me. You know what I mean? And um, Do you like live better than, that was my next question, do you, do you prefer live con, like than, than still photography? Like, just still, like, um, subjects like, you know, portraits and, I mean... Yeah, I think so. I I love the action and being able to catch it, you know, the excitement from, from, uh, you know, the adrenaline rush from it. When I first got involved with it, I had, you know, I was a little kid from a very, very, very small town and I uh, went to a Baptist church, very small one on top of that. And uh, so when I kind of stepped into that whole thing, I... I fell into it. A buddy of mine, I used to work for Ted Nugent when I was about 22 years old, and he gave a buddy of mine a photo pass, and my buddy got sick, so I took his place. And I went to the show and, and did photos. I didn't know anything about, you know, I had a I had a camera at the time, and uh, uh, the girl that I was with at the time it, it had encouraged me to get one and uh, to shoot models and stuff like that. So, but, you know, that didn't... You didn't were all over really, that, huh? Yeah, I mean, I liked well, it. Are they naked? <laughs> Will they be naked? Yeah, I'm in. Yes, yeah, wonderful. <laughs> so it, it wasn't. It just didn't do it for me for whatever reason. And uh, right, I, you know, this is a funny way of how I got into it. I used to sneak my camera into concerts, sticking it down the front of my pants, and I would go up to the stage and and take pictures. And uh, so I always wanted to shoot concerts. And then I finally, you know, got a way to do it legally with Ted. Right. And um, and then afterwards, um, you know, the rush that I got from it, you couldn't get anywhere else. And I was in my 20s, so obviously the only thing, the only other thing that I could do that I could get that rush from was drugs. Right. So I did that for a while and got involved with, you know, with all kinds of little things and, you know, thankfully got out of it. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, but there's still to this day, it's just a rush that you just can't, explain but it's not like it used to be it really isn't it just it just isn't i mean it's um it used to be the most amazing thing and now i think that my gener or our generation i think actually just killed the music industry with all these rules and all these you know this garbage that that you know you have to do today when you're shooting concerts you got to stand at the soundboard you know 150 feet away and it just you know way back right. in the day there used to be backstage passes and all kinds of now you got to pay a thousand bucks to meet these people. It's you told me something interesting about was it Van Halen you told me about that that they they would only allow like something about that they wouldn't allow in the pit or Ed said to him, or it was something he had some heavy restrictions about that. Oh yeah, he doesn't. They um, Irving Azoff is their new is their manager for the last I think a few since they re- reunited with Ross and. Uh, you know, they won't let you shoot from the pit. And a lot of the bands won't because they're, you know, they're older. Why? And they, 
they just they don't want the photographs close up. They just want you really? standing way back. And, but it, it it actually is worse for them too because you can't get great pictures, and uh, it just doesn't do anything for anybody. So I'll be honest with you, I don't really shoot a whole lot. I mean, I've done done my thing, and I've basically passed the torch on to you know to other people and. You know, that's I had my fun and did all that I wanted to. I, you know, I, my dreams have have come true a hundred times over. You know, and, uh, and my nightmares also. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's rock um, and roll, man. It just got more. It just got more and more difficult. Lots of red tape, and you know, that's it's a lot of headache to deal with agents and PR reps and and oh, stuff like didn't that. Didn't we discuss that? <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. It's. <laughs> Those people are just red tape is just psychotic. Different. Yeah, psychotic. Well, then there's those who don't care. There's the rebels. You know, I don't know if you ever watched Craig Ferguson, but he went off the air. But I was a big fan of his, and he would often talk I about. I love him. Yeah, they would. He would say like, "Hey, the publicist said you can't ask him this." I'm like, well, then you're not on my fucking show. It's that simple. Like, yeah. in that boldness, <laughs> you know, it's like because he would talk about you know the publicist. Oh, you can't ask this. You can't ask that. And that. You know, watch Carson from 20 years ago, 25 years ago, and they're smoking and drinking and talking about anything on there. Yeah, you know, right now Carson everything. said that. Yeah, the Carson uh, Carson said the dirtiest thing ever ever said on television. Do you ever hear about that? Do you know what it was? Uh-uh. What was that yes, George Carlin years, line? <laughs> it was the it was the supposed dirtiest thing that had ever been said on the on, on national television. And Josh Gabor was on there. She had her her cat. Was with her, and she said, "Oh, Johnny, would you, would you like to pat my pussy?" And, she, and Carson goes, "God damn right, get that cat out of the way!" Oh my, oh, my goodness. goodness, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, so that was actually on television. Oh, so, that's that's priceless. Yeah, he that did. Priceless. You know, he didn't ask for he didn't ask permission for stuff. He did what he wanted to do, and that's what was so yeah, great exactly. about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I think, man, if you run into any kind of, if you run into, any, not that you should, but if you were to run into any kind of difficulties with this book or people being against it, because there might be people that say, you shouldn't put this out. This, that's all the more reason to do it, and that should be. Yeah, your, 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 your. And luckily, I haven't had any kind of kickback like that. Now, there have been people, you know, not people, but there, uh, I'll be honest, there's, I won't say her name, but there's a, a supermodel that wants to shoot for it. And uh, her agent won't even speak to me because there's no money involved for her for him. Uh, so I hate you that. Get, yeah, that's, that's terrible. But I mean, you get people like that, and um, yep. unfortunately, it's it's a, it's a it's a bad thing. But what can you do? You know, you just keep going with it. And I try not to focus on people that that don't want to do it. Um, no, of course not. Because Wait. Mark, you, you know the industry. You very quickly you would um, you get discouraged and you just stop doing it because there's so much kickback, you know, from yeah. uh, from people out there. And uh, yeah. so I, you know, it, it it does get discouraging sometimes. And uh, but I try to just keep you know going forward with it and and focus on it and just remember the cause and you know it it. it it motivated me a lot when, uh, like I said, when Robin Williams died. I mean, if that right. doesn't wake people up in Hollywood, then nothing will. Right. So, right. Yeah. I don't so, know if let people more scared or, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's, you know, when things like that happen, I think they're they're meant to happen, and you can take them as signs to, to do something positive like this and, you know, and for a greater good. So I'm, I'm behind you 100%, and hopefully I can contribute in any way with people I know that might be listening or might be interested in, in just, you know, just doing for something good if they know it's for a better, you know. You know hopefully we, yeah. hopefully people hearing out there, anybody can hear out there and help in any way, you know, to get this book, to get it really as great as it can be with, you know, with as much help as possible. Right. And, you know, when it's done, I will, um, I'll have a, uh, I'll do a Kickstarter project to fund it. And, um, you know, well, you let me know when the Kickstarter project comes about because I'm good at pushing those. I I put them on my website, and I'm, I'm just about daily you'll see me promoting some kind of Kickstarter or Indiegogo project. Oh, really? Well, that's so great I'm, for sure. There. 
You know, I'm not. You, here's here's something very silly. You're gonna laugh at this, but I am totally stupid when it comes to like uh, Twitter, <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, I do Facebook. That's probably why we couldn't find a lot about you online, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> your social media presence is uh, a bit elusive. If you're going Very for elusive, so. you want. <laughs> well, that's pretty bad, I guess. Right? Is that bad or is it good? Well, I, that's good well, and bad. Well, it depends I, if that's what you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I won't want you know, to you're, know about me. You're known where you want to be known. Right. 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 I mean, it's all about. Well, you know, I. It's all about reach. That's that's the key word to today's. To getting to people. It's all about reach. How many people can you reach? No matter what it is, what's your reach? You know, right. Right. that 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 is really what. What doesn't it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's just your reach. Yeah. You know, That's how many true. people do you reach? You know. So. Hopefully. Yeah. And you know. and you know what? With with doing this show and my music show and now my my kids show that I have, I look at right. my reach a lot. Because there's so many people, you know, you think that, like, nobody's looking at a certain post that you put on Facebook. Um, If you don't have a page and you're not admin of that, you're not going to know actually how many people you reach. So you're thinking, well, nobody liked this. Nobody made a comment on it, so am I wasting my time? But then I'll see that it actually reached, you know, say 1,500 people for the one post. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, then they are looking at it. And that makes right, a difference right. because that makes me want to keep doing what I'm doing. So otherwise yeah, I would have to say, really, hang it up. Right. Yeah, I, I, and yeah, and that's what kind of makes you think, all right, well, this is – but it's just different. We we grew up on a different medium of understanding mm-hmm. how people like stuff. <laughs> what? You click like and or you, you tweet or you retweet and like this is <laughs> – yeah. <laughs> Anybody over thirty five or forty is like it it's it's been a hard adjustment. I've had to adjust my entire career around that. Mm-hmm. Literally. Because yep. I and and I've told Michael this many times that we have a few mutual friends that can't seem to get out of their head that it's not a certain era anymore and that things don't right. function a certain way. And you can either right. play the game and be in the game or sit around the sidelines mm-hmm. and bitch and say how oh this sucks and this changes. Well that's you know what? We didn't like the CD format. They didn't like, you know, right. I mean, everything changed everything. So to be, to you know, you, you have to be willing to, you really have to be willing to, um, you know, to go with the flow and change if you want to stay active in this business, you know. You do. That's true. And I'm going to stop yeah, you guys awesome. for a second because we're down to our last two minutes and we got Tom right. calling in. So just so you know that we can continue to do the show, but it's going to be in record mode. It's not going to be live anymore. So well, that's hold that's on and let me pick up Tom's call, okay? Okay. Good. All right. Tom, are you there? I am. Hey there. Hey, Tom. What's up, Tom? Strider! How are you, man? <laughs> how, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? This is awesome. I am, I am I was great. I was, I was on the train... Uh, leaving San Francisco, and it was uh, it was crazy because there's a Warriors game tonight, so I couldn't call in earlier. I paused it. Well, that's cool. It's cool you did now, so it's good. Tom, uh, <laughs> I've been friends with Tom for, like, how many years, Tom? More than 10 years probably, right? Yeah, yeah, since those three. Yeah, Tom has. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. Tom has basically, well. he has brought uh, Yahoo and Twitter to new levels. He's worked for both of those companies, as a matter of fact. Oh. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, actually, I worked for Yahoo again because the company I currently work for, Bright Roll, was just acquired by Yahoo uh, last month. So I am at a Yahoo. You, were you a ground level Yahoo guy? Uh, no, I started working for them in uh, 08. Okay. And uh, then moved up to the Bay Area in uh, in 2010. I started working for Twitter. And I was with them for a couple of years, and then I, I left uh, in spring of last year, and I started working for this new company, Bright Roll, and then we were just acquired by Yahoo, literally, like, just at the end of the year. All right, on, honest so. two-second answer. Do you think sure. Twitter is a fad? No, no. Okay. It's here to stay. Wow, okay, interesting. Yeah, and he would, he'd be honest about it, so. Yeah, no, yeah I don't want to work for them anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I've asked that question. Well, yeah, I was going to say, are you going to screw yourself somehow if you say the wrong answer here? <laughs> right. No, I've asked him that last question. Last year I would have. Yeah, last year I would have had to say yes. Uh, this year I can, I can uh, give you my honest opinion. No, it's not going anywhere. I mean, 
you know, these these uh, these platforms have so many users at this point that they're they're sort of in a um, you know in a, just an organic cycle. Like they, there's there's just too many people using it for it to go anywhere. Wow, that's like crazy. me, and they don't make that. Twitter go away because I won't survive. <laughs> I don't know what you're I won't so either because I make, <laughs> I make my living off of stuff. So. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Tom makes his seven figures from, from Twitter, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I wish. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully you're going to – are you going to be in L.A. when I come back out or no? I am. Yeah, I'm definitely going to come down and hang out. So Okay, cool. Well, that'll be great. That'll be great. Yeah, be fun. looking forward to it. Can't wait to see the list of uh, rock stars and celebrities you have signed up for, for some shoots. I uh, just talked to, some, to uh, one of my – actress friends today that has a couple of people in mind that are that are pretty huge so I'm very uh, very very anxious to come out and do it to say the least well, <clears throat> well you know you like you've got your uh, you, yeah I can't wait to hear you know you've got your PA all lined up because <laughs> I had a blast the last time <laughs> I know right <laughs> Oh my God! That sounds, that sounds a little uh, uh, mysterious there. That. <laughs> oh no! I mean, I know, no, right? We, we, yeah, there was a lot. There was a devilish laugh about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I might be blowing up a little too much. I mean, no, we got to hang out with some really awesome, awesome people that uh, you know Michael's known for for a bunch of years, and then a bunch of people we never met before, but wanted you know new photo shoot, new headshots, and things like that. So, you know, like. Um, I mean, uh, you know, Bob Gunn was one of the one of the highlights of that trip, right? I mean, we got to hang out with him all day. He's uh, that was great. awesome. Such he's the guy, guy from. Uh, if you guys don't know his name, he's the uh, he's the warden from Shawshank Redemption. Oh yeah, I know him. Yeah, nothing he's more like ever like that movies, character. Right? He, he's a oh, classic what? character actor. Oh, God. one of he the scariest so... characters ever on Celluloid is that character right there. His character in that movie. Yes, yes, yes. and he. Uh, he is completely opposite of that. I was actually very nervous going into that shoot, and he was, uh, God, he was very, very, one of the classiest people I've ever known that I've ever met Hands in down. my entire Hands life. Hands down. Yep. You know, Absolutely. He, he was for sure. <laughs> yeah, that was a good trip. We Who else did we, we shot? Um, uh, tell me, tell me, tell me. I gotta go through my my uh, photo album. <laughs> you don't remember the trip? Party <laughs> <laughs> that hard you don't remember who you saw? <laughs> who else did we shoot that week? Um, I think that's the first time that hold on, I believe the first time that we shot Kathleen Kenmont. That's when yep. that was with her. Um, we did the Bob horse, in the horse farm. In, yeah, we went to Dana Point for Bob, I think. Um, hi, Tom. I <laughs> know, it seems um, like it was a long time ago. A bunch of different people. Um, I think the one of the most fun trips that we had was for Jenny Lee Harrison when we, you know, from uh, Jenny Lee's very, very sweet. From Three's Company. really good friend. Huh? From, from Three's Company? Company? Yes, Three's Company. She was the one that replaced uh, Suzanne Summers. Oh, okay. oh right, and right, right. We shot at her house, um, and uh, that was amazing. And I mean, yeah. we God, we did a lot of shoots that that first week. God, that was a lot of shoots. Yeah. Um, Michael Pore, a bunch of different people. Jeez, a yeah. lot. Oh yeah, but it was, I mean, we made a lot of contacts that week. Yep, he's a great guy too. That was a lot of fun. Well, yeah. I remember when you came out and, and shot uh, Cheech Marin. That was yes. interesting to see how that came about. <laughs> yeah, Cheech was Cheech was amazing. He was very, very, very cool, very funny. You know, it was actually. You know what was the most interesting it. fact that I remember learning from that video shoot? Is right. Remember, I think he told us that he or he told you guys, he told Joni that that he he never made more, he made more money on what was it, cars? Yes. Yeah, on yeah, more money off of the Cars movie, his voice than anything he ever did it. Yeah, because he, he asked me, he said, Michael, take a guess what I've made the most money on. And I, my first you know, answer to that was probably smoke. He said, nope. Mm-hmm. 
not Cheech and Chong. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said they sent me a box. He said I was for the movie Cars, and he said they sent me a box. And in that box, for every million that I made, there was a car. And he said, Michael, there was eighteen cars in that box. Like, oh, oh my, oh my God. God! Shit! Incredible. <laughs> yeah. So. Think wow. about it. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about you're not talking about domestic. You're talking about worldwide yeah. revenue. You know, yeah. ridiculous Just money from none of us will ever see. <laughs> right. Versus yeah. movies made in the you know cult cult uh, classics made in the seventies that were probably made on a shoestring budget, and those guys weren't super famous back then. You know, and right nowadays, the I mean, geez, a voiceover. Okay, I'm gonna check that box. That's my next job. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty amazing. So it was a great, 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 you know, great trip. Well, Tom, since you know Michael for so long, <laughs> tell us something we don't know. Tell us a juicy oh, story. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what's his hidden, what's his hidden talent? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, well, what can he do with he a beer is... bottle after 10 beers? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so fun. That's funny. Remember the time we went to the Dresden in L.A.? Oh, wow. See, yes. my, my, my my favorite old school band. Um, let's see. What's the hidden? I mean, I don't know if you guys know about his uh, his um, collection of movie paraphernalia and on autographs and um, celebrity no. photos. No, oh, I don't really know much about that at all. We're, this is museum quality stuff. I mean, I think yeah. uh, at some point, at some point, we're gonna have to open up some kind of a some kind of a gallery, but. I've never seen so many cool like movie props and you know I mean you've got you've got one of the original masks from uh, from from Halloween right? Lots of stuff, yeah. One of the Jason wow. outfits, stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, awesome, awesome collection. Mostly like from horror horror genre, um, but right. just mind blowing collection. Wow, you well, bring some you of got a vault. Out. I know, right? I need to. I haven't collected anything in a long time, though. You know, it's um, it's exp- it's an expensive hobby. It's, I mean, sometimes you have, you know, sometimes I've in certain situations I've become friends with some of these people, but uh, you know, if you don't have a a connection with them, then uh, it can be very expensive. I've got a lot of stuff, and but the the night that you're talking about at the dress, and God, that was so cool, and. We got to meet Marty and Elaine. Excuse me. And Literally were, one of the uh, one of the <laughs> coolest coolest experiences. I you know, God, you know, I, I don't wish any ill will on everyone, anyone, but you know they are getting older, and they're not yeah. going to be able to do what they do much longer, if if at right. all. And uh, that was just so epic to be able to to hang out with those guys for the night and listen to them play and have them come over and talk to us and. You know, that's just, I mean, that's a, that's a bucket list checks off. What were they, uh, what movie were they in? I can't remember. It was a Vince Vaughn movie, right? Swingers. Yeah, Swingers. Oh, that's so a they, film. You know, we were, we were so hyped up. They were there, and we were so hyped up. Oh, God, we got to get, we got to get a picture with them. <clears throat> and we go over there, and we're like, okay, let's get a picture. And, and then we get a picture. And let's get another picture. <laughs> when we said that, and then, all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden we're hanging out with them like they didn't want to stop taking pictures. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> I heard, I, I kind of overheard Elaine going, "Well, how many fucking pictures do he want?" <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> this is way. So they were they were very funny, but man, they they can't do that much longer because I think they're there every night. They yeah, play at least at least five or six nights a week. So the Dresden Lounge, I don't know if if, um, if anyone's familiar with it, but it's uh, it's in Las Feliz uh, in L.A. and it's one of these super super old school little neighborhood uh, dive bars. And Marty and Elaine uh, play the keyboards and the drums and they sing. And they've been there; they're a staple. I mean, they've been there for like I don't know forty fifty years, maybe it's like forever. Wow. And they were featured in the movie Swingers, which is, you know, one of my favorite movies. And so when I lived in L.A., I, I would just frequent the establishment quite often because I was right down the street. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that unfortunately can't last forever. So if you're in the area, I would definitely suggest going and getting a drink there and just listening to them. 
Yeah, very cool. cool. They, they're um, just the experience is great. I mean, they're horrible, horrible, horrible singers, but it's oh, that's yeah. what makes oh, it so they're, cool. They're <laughs> Jesus, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't think I've ever heard anyone sing worse than Elaine does, but it's just so cool. <laughs> that's you know, why I hang out in enough karaoke uh, bars, and I'm sure you'll see you'll meet her match. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Mark. I think uh, I don't know if you would or not, but uh, it's it's great. I had a I had an amazing time. I really did. You know, awesome. so, yeah. But hopefully, we can hang out again. Yeah, looking forward uh, to it. This is going to be a good trip. Cool. Well, well I hate cool, to cut you guys off, but I I have family stuff to wrap up before kids go to bed and stuff. <laughs> I yeah, have to be very un rock and roll. <laughs> it's very un rock and roll, but that's what happens when you got kids. Well, very good. So, it was, this was awesome. Thank you for having me, Pam. It was great. I enjoyed myself. The topics were great. Hopefully, we uh, we made some people laugh and entertained a few folks, and you know, it was great. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks for having thank you. I really so appreciate it. I, yeah. And I appreciate you know you letting us be on the show too, Pam. That was that was awesome of you to uh, invite us on the show. Yep. Oh, you're show. very welcome. You. I had a lot of fun. The two hours flew by, and I just like I know what? it did. Really? <laughs> I told Michael so, the other day, I'm like, if she doesn't know us, I'm like, we get going. I'm like, you're yeah. not stopping us. You'll need more than two hours. Yeah, and why? Why was I worried about questions, huh, Mark? <laughs> yeah, not not with these two guys. <laughs> Better with these two guys. Yeah, as much as you talk, well, it just I, goes on and on. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm going to go cool, ahead guys. and wrap up the show then. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. You're thank welcome you. back anytime. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, someday I hope to meet you guys too. Absolutely. Well, thank you I hope I'll be in family. Chicago or you'll be in LA. Likewise. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think more likely you'll want to be in LA. <laughs> yeah. yeah, more than likely. <laughs> Okay, okay guys, take care, everybody, night. and we'll chat Thank again you guys. soon. Okay, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.